All right, Bang Bang, today is uh, Monday. It's June 6th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Uh, we are back after a week off for Memorial Day. And uh, we're joined by a first-time guest, a guest that I've wanted to be on this show for a long time. Uh, you see him on Zoom. You see him with this beautiful office, beautiful chair. It's Stu Finer. Stu, welcome to the show. Uh, let me tell you something. First of all, guys, I fucking love you. It's it's such an honor. I mean, I'm I have such energy right now. First of all, I can't wait to come to Chicago because I'm coming to Chicago. We are gonna party so fucking hard. It's gonna be unbelievable. But it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to you know to be part of our school. I'm so happy you've ingratiated me as one of your own because that's what I am. Common man, big fat short tiny guy trying to just make a fucking living and grind it fucking out let's go beautiful Stu, did you get a tee shot today is that why you're jazzed up or you don't need that you're just always ready to go um, i get one every uh two weeks i get uh twice a month and uh it's fabulous i mean you know my penis would not be hard otherwise i don't think my um body would be as tight i mean look at this far i mean look Ooh, at that muscle. I can, pipes. if i hit you in the face i could kill you and i'm five four three quarters 61 years old and i'm not a tough guy but you know tee shots are amazing i would recommend them all the time for anybody at any level at any age any age why okay. not how all do right. your boners compare to when you were when you're younger full strength now um, all, all natural boners back let's say you're 25 well i well if, after i come now i can never get hard again so, okay. I mean, years ago, I come, get hard, come, get hard. That hasn't happened since probably mid-40s, probably 45. I'm 61, so probably 15 years since I could fuck like an animal, come, and then the second one would be the real one. Now, the first one is all I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, do you have a personal record, you know, that, Stu? That's why, that's why eating ass and licking clit, it, 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 just, it just expands the experience. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. I can't pound for an hour no more. Probably not even a half hour. Probably, you know, we're talking gut level with my hand on the fucking Bible. It's like a good 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm done. Then I just, I want to go to sleep, really. I don't even want to, you I know, mean, clean up the mess. You just, you just <laughs> described every one of my sexual experiences as being bad. 10 to 15 <laughs> minutes and then go to bed. That's, that's the goal for me. Well, I, I think that's why, I mean, it's extremely important, really, to eat ass and then like click because it gives you the momentum mm -hmm. that the woman's already been extremely satisfied. Mm -hmm. You've dispelled the rumor of men being selfish because you have put yourself first into the two areas where they love, they're satisfied, and then you're just, just ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Stu, for the people that don't know, uh, you do have a time allotted for all of this, you know, eating ass, looking clit, and fucking, and can you let the people know what it is? Yeah, I mean, specifically, it's 15 minutes eating ass. So you get going there, you eat ass, you just you just love it. You're in there. You're, you're as deep as possible, and then it's 15 minutes licking clit, and then it's 30 minutes fucking, and if you can't hold your load, you bring a vibrant. And as I've specified, I love the vibrator with the mouse on the end, with the tongue, because it goes into the clitoris, and you can vaginally jam it into, and then you're a king. You know, then you're like a superstar. You know what I'm saying? Modern science is the king. Uh, Dave, any comments? I got nothing. I got nothing. That seems disappointing. Have you ever thought about teaching like a uh, sex ed class? You know how there's um, like a call in show. I do it every day. You turn it in my pool. But I could. No, no, no. I literally could, but then you have these jerk offs that are like, hey, if you eat ass, you could have, you know, you could have diseases and it's not clean and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But uh, yes, I would love to do that. And I feel that I am a foremost authority on it. And uh, added insecurity is how I became a great fuck. You know what I'm saying? I remember, mm -hmm. you know, I feel 10th like grade going to these bars when uh, it was Saturday Night Fever and we grinding on the dance floor and I'd shoot the load in my pants. And nice. I'd be like, oh my God, but now what happened? <laughs> nice. <laughs> so then it doesn't matter now because I would have already ate your ass, licked your clit, and if I shot the load even before I got hard, the woman's like, don't worry about it, I already mm -hmm. came. You know how many people said that's a fucking, that's a home run when they say, don't worry about it, I've already came, I love you, come here and kiss me. That's that's when you know you're great. After I've eaten a woman's ass, Licked her click, she grabs it by my hand, she tongue kisses me and says, don't, because let's say I've came, you know, because they're so hot, they're like, don't worry, come here, and they, and they tongue kiss me. That's when you know mm -hmm. you've done it. Uh, Dave, anything? 
Ed, I got nothing. <laughs> I got <laughs> nothing. <laughs> that's disappointing. Folks, if you can not tell by now, it's going to be a little Lex rated today. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's Stu, and that's what we want, and that's what I want. That's what everybody wants, so yeah. I love it. Thank yeah. you, Do Stu. we have the little yes. uh, the little E moniker on the podcast episode? We, we will have to make yeah. sure we do. Yeah. We will have to make sure we do. Um, okay, so today is the uh, best first times draft. Okay, someone suggested this, a listener suggested this, I believe. Um, and uh, it sounded like a good thing to do. It sounded like a good thing to have Stu on for. So this will be the, the thing you experienced that was the best first time, the most memorable, like, man, I remember the first time I did mm-hmm. this. That was awesome. And whoever puts together the best board obviously will win. Um, I don't have results from, oh, we, we don't have results from the disgusting behavior draft because we're banking a couple here, a lot of trips, Memorial Day, a lot of shit going on. So uh, we're just going to, uh, we're going to start the show here. So you don't want to talk about the other one? Which one? The soda draft, non-soda draft. I don't think you want to talk about that. Why don't I want to talk about it? Because, I mean, you just, <laughs> just robbed the shit out of this guy. I don't think I How did won. I rob the shit out of him? I won he the won, draft. He won. What's, it, it makes no sense. It's like. You really think I. Did that? If, I don't think you did. I think a Barada fuck did it. <laughs> no, okay, the Barada on. gang would. No, 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 he didn't do it. I don't know if anybody did it because we were out you of town. So got, you think he attention. came that close to your draft? Yes. But okay, hold on. So say, uh, say Kirk Ferentz. I don't know why I use him. He wins the national championship and beats Bama, and then Bama gets popped for I, recruiting you're, you're violations. You're in the clear. You're not. You're not. Then you said the draft's void. I didn't say that. The, there not, was there was a dog. I don't know. Post. Da, Danny did that rogue. I'll okay. be honest. So, so Dave beat me by that. a tenth of a point. But you you just can't wrap your head around the fact that sparkling water, lemonade. Yeah, I, I can't. No, I water. Can't. I, I, you just. You, but that's because you have the palate. I of a did third notice. Grader. You I did really notice think that I was up 31, by like three, Do you think he had thirty percent of the vote? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't no know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because. You know, the fucking LaCroix P- Pampamousse or whatever people call Pample that shit. Mousse. No, it's not how it's pronounced, pal. That was made very clear in some of the feedback that we had from that episode. It's Pampamousse? It's, it's French. It ain't Pamplemousse. That's Who not the way we say it. It's it. grapefruit. I, I don't know That's why my, they call it that. Okay. But Sorry, everybody knows Stu, what some it is. housekeeping notes here. It's, it's Sorry, just, it's, 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 it's French. Is what they, The name of that is French. LaCroix isn't French itself. I think it's bottled in I don't Wisconsin, think you, you didn't do anything saying. wrong, Dave. I don't know. That was that was an That was an accidental error. You You won. All right. Dave won. Yes. Dave what do you won. mean? What's good. an accidental error? I don't know. I'm Someone, not following. I the saw the poll walk. and I was like, this has to be juiced. And I assumed that Chief was going to win. And then How many votes did it take? Like That's all way you know. So, yeah. so like, just look at how many votes were in the last there, couple. And there, if there's yeah, a big there spike is, in the votes, somebody went out and fucked with it. There was nearly... nearly yeah, like we haven't had this problem before. People did do this to us before. Of course. Yeah, but it's been a while. It's... Mm. Has it? A couple months, maybe. Well, they, they, I remember they used to just, they were fucking with it perpetually, which is why we needed to invoke a new system. Mm-hmm. So this one had 20,000. Regardless, Dave we wins. Just don't, we Dave don't wins. have the capacity yeah. to like ref. The fucking system is the system. Don't fuck with this thing. Yeah, there's a lot of, mo- there's just a lot of st- stuff going on behind the scenes here. The last thing we need is just like the, to have to go find a solution for the poll right now. <laughs> like just leave us alone, please. That's, I agree with you. All right. Well, um, now I got a little, I got a problem. What? I'm going to look up one other one here. Because, to your point, there was nearly double from the cry moments. Um, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So let me look up a third one just to make sure. But this is also going to get more traffic because it's a more engaging topic than crying. I, I true. agree. Movie. So Salt, go look salty, at Salty Snacks. Go look at Salty Soda Pop. Snacks was 13.5. So maybe there was a little foul play. That's my point. It okay. had nothing to do with Dave. It got lost in translation where um, Dave wouldn't have been the rightful. He overcame the odds. Dave won. Dave won. I would like that on record. Well, Dave deserved to win that draft, I think, in hindsight. He did well. I don't think he did, but it's fine. Stu? Pal- What's up, buddy? <laughs> Pal- I'm good. I, I like, listen, I like, it sounds like my dinner table. So I'm good. <laughs> I, see, I, I, you know, I have my wife and four sons. <laughs> yeah, I see this every day. Like okay, good. Um, Stu, we're going to draw uh, for the order here. Our producer, Harry, he has a number one through five behind his back. Can you guess what number it is? Three. No. Carl. Two. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that makes me so happy. Uh, I'll take the... Um, Um, I'll take the third overall pick. I'll take the third overall pick. Carl, uh, Chief, one through four. One. 
Yes. I will take the fifth spot. Uh, one through three, Dave. Two. No. <coughs> one. Yes. I'll take two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take two. Uh, Stu, one or two? Um, I'll go one. Yes. All right. All right, one. Do you want the first spot in the draft or do you want the fourth spot in the draft? Hmm. First. Okay. Good. That's how I wanted it. That's how I wanted it. I think right. we all came in here hoping Stu picked first overall. I think that was without without really freezing envelopes and fucking with the balls here. I think we really wanted Stu pick him first That's, overall. Stu, the floor is yours. That was the tip of the cap. Yeah. That was the tip of the cap. That's so, just right. like so the, the, the snake draft gods looking down on us. Yes. To, um, all right, so the order is Stu, Eddie, Carl, White Sox, Dave, Chief. All right, but before we do the best first time snake draft, I want to talk to you about the perfect sponsor for a Stu Finer podcast. That's Roman. Today we're talking about Roman Swipes. It is the secret to longer lasting sex. Roman Swipes are clinically proven way to last longer in bed. They're effective. They're easy to use. They're fast acting. They don't require a prescription. Uh, Roman Swipes ship to you discreet unmarked packaging. I don't even think you need it. You don't need unmarked packaging. Let people know what's going on. Each swipe packet is small enough to hide in your wallet if that's what you want to do. Take it out, open it up, super easy. Swipe it on, let it dry. Doesn't transfer your partner. That's very key. This is a hookup summer. Weather's great. You're going to need that Roman swipe. Make that good first impression. Roman, go to getroman.com slash dog walk to get $10 off when you choose a monthly plan. I always say this, Roman is very generous about how much sex they think you're having in a month. Great sponsor, great people. Check them out again. That's getroman.com slash dog walk. Getroman.com slash dog walk. And now back to the snake draft with Stu Finer. Uh, all right, Stu, without further ado, you are on the clock. Number one overall, what do you got? Okay, so now I'm gonna say I'm gonna talk about fir my first time doing something. I'm gonna tell the story. Yeah, so so like you you don't even have to tell the story, but in your estimation, like hey, this is the best thing on the first time. Like this is an unforgettable like this. Um, first time I got my ass eaten. <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> like if God gave me a billion bucks right now, I'd rather the first time I got my ass eaten. <laughs> was your ass prepared for it? Was it was it cleaned no, up and I, I no. I thought I look, first it went like this. First it went like this. Her hands were in her mouth and she was licking her fingers. And then she stuck them up my ass. I said, What the fuck are you doing? She's like, Calm down. Relax. And then it went from her fingers, which I thought I was being violated, and then she just went down. And then I, I it had, took me a couple of seconds to get used to it because I, I really was scared. I was tight, you know, I was tense. And then she just said, calm down, you know. And uh, it was one of the greatest things. I, it might be the greatest thing that's ever happened. I just didn't, it was phenomenal. <laughs> How but, old um, were you? How I would suggest everyone having it done. How old were you, Steve? How old were you when oh. this happened? 23. Okay. 23. What day was it? Um, it was a Saturday. It was the night before, yes, at the Nassau Coliseum. Okay. And uh, I remember it like it was fucking yesterday. Like it was yesterday. And Dave? If anyone specifically, what? Go. Can't relate. Sorry, <laughs> Stu. Um, but, so, my condolences. I mean, yeah, I get it. It sounds. This is unbelievable. You got to get your ass eaten. But not even. You have I, to get your ass eaten. I can't believe you have nothing for Stu. This is. I, I mean, I'm just here for the stories today. I I'm not going to be <laughs> able here to, to be stack educated. Up. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to stack up hardly at all, if at all. Uh, <laughs> I can't relate. Twenty three before know. what concert you said? Uh yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the band know. yes at the Nassau yeah. Coliseum. Okay. John Anderson, Rick Wakeman, Steve Howe. Have you kept in Chris touch with Squire. the woman, Chris Squire? I was just about to say. Well, no, no, it was no, 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 no. It was a, it was a one night stand. I never saw her again. I got her phone number where when I called, it was disconnected. Oh, <laughs> I was never so disappointed in my life. <laughs> it was a one night stand. It was a rando, and it was holy fuck. And I said. This is unbelievable, but 
it was short lived. And what's the gap there, Stu? Twenty three. How old were you when it happened next? Because I feel like it might have been, you know. Um. Twenty seven. Okay. Four so years. Four years. You know, right. like, it's it's not like a a, a daily or weekly mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. You got to find the right person at the right time. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and it's, you know, it's not, you know, what are you supposed to say? Some, hey, eat my fucking ass. I mean, I say it now. But not when I was yeah, Stu, you know, Stu, do you yeah. feel like you were born? Stu, Finder. Stu do you feel like you were born in the wrong era? I feel like butt stuff is like in vogue now in a way that it wasn't. Oh, God. Are you kidding? I used to tell people, people used to look at me like I should be in jail. Like I needed, like, you know, psychiatric help for things that, that I liked, that I thought, you know, like again. Now everything is, uh, you know, accepted. Mm -hmm. But then, no, people looked at me like, you know, I was disgusting. Like, stay away from me. Don't breathe on me. <laughs> where, where, you know, what happened to you? What what happened to your ass? Or what do you like eating? At? You know, no, no, I was a, I was a trendsetter. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and most people hate trendsetters at the beginning until it becomes, you know, vote. Beautiful. Well, they had to wait a presidential term before it happened again. So, um, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad it's daily now, Stu. I'm glad it's daily. Uh, all right, so ass eating's off the board, boys. Let's cross that off. Um, <laughs> getting your ass eaten. Getting your ass yes. eating's off the board, yes. Yeah, eating ass is still on the board. Mm -hmm. Still on the board. Okay, it's to me now. I am going to take your first college party. I think there's something about going to that first one because, you know, you get dropped off and, like, it's, it's a little, you know, maybe a little uneasier in the dorms, but right when you walk to that first – that first party and everything's so accessible is is it's an eye opener mm -hmm. and it's uh i mean i don't you know you guys know the feel it's hot it's summer mm -hmm. um it's it's great it's great yeah that what you got something to say well, no i mean because i i had on my list uh your first day of college and yeah. So I, th I guess those are probably like classes. The, no, but you, do you have classes on your first no, day? No, you, you move had in on like week. a Thursday or something. Yeah, yeah. that's like yeah. You, the day you move in. Yeah. Yeah, but like I, I have this feeling where it like all happened within five minutes, where you know, shut the door, my parents leave, and then we lived on the first floor. We had a quad my freshman year, first floor, and one of my roommate's brothers, older brothers, at went to school there too passed us a 30 rack through the window and it was like that like to me like it's burned in my mind you're like all right i'm here well that's still draftable i know we're talking about it but like okay I, there's definitely you think those, college party. that's different i think there's yeah, definitely way different. different yeah because okay. i i hope yeah, you your do. first college party is like your first i remember the first you know like you go into the house party for the first time you're with a group of like a ragtag maybe a guy from high school a yeah. guy you met on the floor just like yeah we'll go off for a second we'll walk around you see the music or mm -hmm. you hear the music you see the people staying outside it's like Oh, like let's let's go check that out for a second. All right, yeah. So, so you think those are different? Totally. Enough. Okay. Totally All different. Right. First college party, like you're, it might be at a place you never go to again. Now, is it just, when you're in college, or are you talking about when you're in high school and you go visit a college? I'm talking in, in college. college. In okay. college, because there's something about that to be like, whoa, like the fucking the independence, the, the whole the yeah, covers the whole, off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, something yeah, about yeah. it where like, I, wait, I could just go home and I, don't, you know, I yeah. mean, I never really had to worry about that anyways. But for a lot of people, I'm sure I definitely did. You did, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like, oh my, and I, I could go home and I don't got eat fucking corn nuts to get the beer off my breath. <laughs> you know, there's something yeah. about mm -hmm. uh, that. But I, you know, uh, yeah, I like this pick here. Good I pick. I think it's good. Very good pick. Uh, Stu, anything on that? You like that one? Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I, for me, that I mean, I went to NASA Community College, so it was like a community college. There wasn't really many parties. I guess my house would have been the college party because there would be like my parents went out every Friday night and Saturday night. So we'd just dump 100, 200 people into a tiny house, tiny backyard, destroy the place. But when I went to an actual full time college to visit my friends in Stony Brook University, which would be the first time, I could not believe a how much people drank like how much people drank literally and they would just throw up on themselves and you know people laying all over the floor men women just i was stunned i was like you know i'm like is that person dead are you, are you, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know like you poke there like don't worry about it. it's every weekend i'm like that's unbelievable mm -hmm. so the shocking thing to me about the first like legit college part i went to was how much people drank yeah like in human amounts of liquor it's crazy and like everyone's yeah. like a lot of freshmen so you, you see people barfing and shit and like, yeah. i don't know it's just your first real time you could just get your hands on mm -hmm. anything it's a great time it's a great time the best um 
the best. Uh, Carl, you're up. I'm going to take the first time you smoke weed and get high. Mm. <clears throat> All right. So I didn't smoke weed in high school and like very sparingly in college. And there was one summer I was living in Boise, Idaho, and it was like a college summer baseball league. And I was going to be, I think like a junior or something in eligibility wise. And they, you're living with random guys. And it was uh, me and three other guys living together. It was a kid from Yale who was like, Total libertarian, taxes is theft, fucking fuck the government, like crazy lunatic kid. There was a kid from a community college in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, whose dad was in the Air, for, Air Force, who called my mom Mrs. Joyce and was like the most polite person of all time. And then there was this kid from Alaska who split time between Alaska and Oregon because his parents were divorced. And his dad was this hunter in Alaska and his mom was like this crazy drug addict in Oregon. And this dude smoked so much fucking weed and when we first lived together i was very very hard oh, like i don't smoke weed dude i don't smoke weed you know i'm working out i'm trying to get better for illinois and i was like one of the few d1 kids in the summer league because i wasn't that good at illinois but so like this was a good league for me to be in and i was just like such a hard oh about like i gotta get better i gotta lift weights i gotta do a lot of stuff so after a couple of weeks finally the guy from oregon was like Der his name's Derek. he's like dude you come on like stirk we gotta get you going man come on like you're a little tense buddy we gotta get you going so I sat down and I was like, fine. There's a group of these community college kids. And again, I had that chip on my shoulder. I was like, I'm the D1 walk on. Like I'm not smoking weed with the fucking community college kids at night, like during the summer league and stuff. So finally I'm like, all right, all right, all right. What's, what's the fucking hype about? We sit down, we watch Cat Williams. He comes out, he does, he's when he's wearing the green blazer. And I shit you not, I thought I had to go to the emergency room. I was laughing so hard. I thought that my guts were gonna come out of my fucking <laughs> mouth. And from like that night forward, I was like, yo, can we like, we like smoke a little weed and like watch watch them in the Cat Williams again. And they thought I was like such a stiff and such a, like just, it was just like a, such a funny evolution throughout by the end of that summer where it was like, all right, let's get that bong out. Uh, and then the, the Yale kid would never smoke weed with us and was like, it smells like marijuana in here. And I'm not joking, he got drug tested by the NCAA because the NCAA has jurisdiction throughout the year Whoa. on you. Wow. So he gets a call one day and he's like, I gotta go down, I gotta go down to the Boise State football facility. We're like, why? He's like, the fucking NCAA hit me up. I gotta go get drug tested and if I, and he was all worked up if I fail this drug test because secondhand smoke in the <laughs> yeah, town home, we're gonna be all yeah. worked up. We are kind of laughing. Fault. Now I'll be honest, I was shitting my fucking pants because I was like, well, I was just like uh, terrified that I would get drug yeah. tested, mm -hmm. I would get suspended, I would be like ostracized, but it was an amazing fucking thing and like it shouldn't be a surprise. Yeah, I like smoking weed, it's great. Stu, I love, <laughs> I love, I, that was a long story, but now I say this because I want to turn it over to you. You smoke so much weed, I love your weed content. It's, fu it's fucking hilarious watching you smoke a blunt. Uh, I mean, there's, listen, there's nothing better than smoking a blunt, I think. And on, I think June 3rd and June 4th, Eddie's coming down. It's going to be Joey Diaz and me smoking blunts until we can't see, baby. I, I just love smoking pot because it just makes you just, it's like, it's like this day, it's like a haze goes over you. And it's like, I want to kill you. I fucking, hi. <laughs> and that's literally how insane it is. It's like, I fucking hate you, you motherfucker. Hey, how's everything? Come on over here. You know, like it makes me feel good. I lo I love it. It calms me down. You know, it calms my head down. Cause I'm always thinking of so many insane things. What to do? I'm always racing. You know, like I have to hit the Super Bowl every single day. You know, but with marijuana, if I, I just smoke marijuana, it's like winning the Super Bowl. You know, it's just a great feeling. <laughs> it's great hanging out with your friends and getting stoned. You know, it's it's like a camaraderie. It really is, and a blunt is amazing because it's just. It tastes so good, and the you know the the paper, oh, love it. God, I'm ready right now. I, I wish we could smoke through the phone. <laughs> How long have you been smoking for, Stu? Like when? Um, I started in at 16. Okay, and do you remember the first time or no? Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was again at a Yes concert. Uh, it was at the Rolea <laughs> and we we smoked the joint in the bathroom at the NASA Coliseum, and then. We watched, uh, yes, it was Rolea. What a fucking album. Stoned out of our minds. And, and our mouths are cotton, and we're so hungry. And my friend brought Oreo cookies. And just eating the Oreo cookies at the NASA Coliseum and just watching yes was amazing. Absolutely amazing. We were into progressive rock and roll you know, from England. We were into yes, ELP, 
Genesis. Those are our three main bands. And stoned progressive rock and roll. You got the piano, you got everything fucking rolling, you got keyboards, and it was just unbelievable. And uh, yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday, you know? And then, you know, it was wild talking about this. My wife, it's pretty fucked up if you think about it. My wife gets pregnant. We went two weeks to Italy and two weeks on a cruise after I got married, 1988, March 12th. Come back, she's fucking pregnant. She says to me, I don't want you smoking pot. I'm like, are you out of your fuck? What are you fucking talking? She goes, listen, I don't want my children seeing a stoned person. You're not smoking pot. I said, honey, I've been smoking pot with you since I'm 17. I've been with you since seven. Are you fucking kidding me? She fucking laid it down. She goes, I don't give a fuck. I'm pregnant. You're not smoking. I stopped smoking pot from 1988 to 1995. Not a hit. Not, not one fucking hit. So we had three kids. So on my third son was born uh, February 10th, 1995. And my buddies came with this crazy hash from like Zimbabwe. You know, like you got to smoke this. And then I broke down, smoked it. I went to the fucking hospital. And I said, honey, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, now, now I'm stoned. So anything's possible when I'm stoned, it's a frightening situation. I'm like, I'm renting a plane and we're going to Atlantic City to play the number, number 10, because it was, it was uh, February 10th. She's like, go. And that was the first time I, I, and she was cool with it, thank God. And it went like 70,000 that night. It was unbelievable. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was like, I bet 200 on 10, one, which is like 7,000. Then I took the 7,000, rounded around, 10 hit again. Ten, I, I went 10 three straight times, one, 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 lost the fourth, took all the fucking money, got in the plane and came home. I took her engagement ring and I went to my, in the city, to the diamond jewelry district, my cousin worked there, and I upgraded her ring from like a $20,000 ring to a $70,000 ring. And now the ring's worth like a quarter of a million bucks. It's the one that she wears on her finger. <clears throat> That's so, a nice gesture. That, that was amazing. That, a good gesture. that was amazing. Yeah. And I went from I went from uh, 164 to 234 in two months. Wow. Wow. Now, God just, damn. Uh, because then I was fucking smoking every day then. Then it was all over. <laughs> I, I was stoned pretty much for about five Floodgates were open after that. Oh, it was all yeah. over. It was over. It was yeah. over. Anybody, so I would say I didn't really enjoy my first time. So would that be like a fair criticism? I feel like it's yeah, it's like a so. personal thing. Yeah. So like I, I had. But like, he, he was specific. He said first time getting high on weed. So I guess, I guess like, because not everyone gets high the first time, right? So it's like, uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah just like the yeah, first yeah, time yeah. you get really high so smoking weed. Your like, point you know. still stands. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, there are people that are like, yeah, I smoked weed and it was bad and I got paranoid and I thought my parents were going to catch me and all this stuff and. You know, I didn't have that experience, and a lot of pe other people do, don't, whatever. Yeah. But uh, that's my pick, and I like the fucking pick, so. Yeah, that's, okay. you know. Yeah. So it's, it's just, I mean, it's like a, it's like a fucking hilarious, like, that's every time I see Cat pick. Williams, I'm like, oh, my God, it's yep. my guy. Like, I have a, a special bond pick. to him. And we lived up next next to a Jack in a Box that summer, too, so we had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> of fun. That's a first rounder. Uh, White Sox, David, you love the 70s music. I mean, it just the, sounds like you, you go back, uh, smoke some hash, the, get the, the ass Mike eaten. Squire. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds like I haven't doing. lived a tenth of the life that Stu has lived. That just is going for sure. off these first few You got picks. a virgin I, ass? I'm very, very much so. Um, and I'm going to keep it very, very... <laughs> G-rated for this one. <laughs> well, Tom, I hope, Stu, I hope to accomplish this with you and Joey Diaz soon. So that, yeah, that's yes, true. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. We, we are great. recording this, right? Oh, yeah. It'll be all. Like, camera. so did you notice anybody who was a little under the influence yesterday at the airport? Oh, yeah. Chief was annihilated. <laughs> yeah, he was completely fucking blasted. Absolutely. At the so were you. Yeah, not, we, not nearly as bad what, were as were these you? guys, like, chewing down uh, edibles I, and we stuff? We walked up, yes. and I like, we're getting on an airplane. Got to get high. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah. were doing that, it's, it's a must for an airplane at this I point. Mean, I mean, we were doing stool scenes, and, like, I was with Tom, and they were together, and I was like, yeah, we should play this bit on Dave that someone tweeted us a photo of Dave getting cavity searched in the line. And, like, <laughs> I, I walk up, and they're both, like, sleeping on the couch, and Dave is, like, Chief sleeping. Dave is, I like, fucking. I was in the middle of Northwestern. He's, like, Googling something he, watching Ryan Whitney highlights. On, yeah. <laughs> and that was just an auto pop-up. I didn't yeah. even look that up. Yeah. I was like watching YouTube. And well, that's because you're chipped. They're listening to your conversation. And Pretty Chief much. was just smoked out of his gourd. Uh, but sorry, Dave. PG pick. Not even. This is a very G-rated pick. I'm not positive I will see this out of any of my teams again. But first time your team wins a championship. It was the best day of my life. 
The Bulls, I, 91. No, no, I'm talking about your team team. <laughs> your team. Like the Bulls, if they win again, cool. The Blackhawks was a fun ride. Uh, Bears at Northwestern, that'd be a little different. But when the White Sox won it, I watched it with my dad, uncles, and grandpa. To this day, best day of my entire life. And I'm not sure I'll ever see that again. I was promised I would with this current core, but they lied to my <laughs> oh, <fucking> no. face. <laughs> they lied to my goddamn face. At least thus far they have. But... um. Great pick. N- nothing, absolutely nothing will compare to that day. I remember it start to finish. It's great pick. Yeah. Great I pick. mean, it really is a good yeah. pick. Yeah. I, don't th- I wasn't, th- I, my head was, I have a little bit of sports stuff, but it wasn't a championship related. Yeah, that's the only, yeah, the only sports thing I got, I think. I fucking love being around people who don't have a championship for their team. Tom's not in there. Is like, 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 like how much Tom, KFC? like his, yeah, like his Jets. Like how much the Jets ruin him? Like yeah. the Rangers losing last night. Like he that doesn't even great. remember '94. He's not old enough. It's perfect. So, yeah, yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. Perfect. The when the Hawks won it in because I was at Echo, in 15. 2015. I tweeted KFC because he always has the worst days of the year shtick going. I'm like, man, going to work today after winning a championship is the worst day of the year. <laughs> and he he just responded. He's like. I got nothing. You got me. Like, he, I, he tapped out. Yeah. Stu, are you numb to your championships through your career gambling now, or wh- where does your you fandom still lie? 86 Mets. Well, I mean, I caught the Islanders winning four straight cups. So a- after that, it was, you know, like, in other words, nothing compares to that. I mean, even the Mets winning the 86 World Series, which was inhuman. I mean, 69, I was eight years old. Um, I was on a little transistor radio. I was in uh, fourth grade. And we all took the radios to school. And then on the way home is when they won. So we were listening to it. Um, but, um, you know, winning four straight cups was insane. It was inhuman because, like, literally, you know it. You know it in your balls, especially, you know, with Barstool and with your love for sports. When your team wins a championship, you are a champion. Yeah, yeah, you I'd agree with that. literally... Everything you do is better. Everything you you yep. feel special. Mm-hmm. Winning four in a row is inhuman. It's inhuman. So um, that was phenomenal. But I'll, I'll I'll tell you the one that stands out the most to me. I mean, the Giants in '87 was phenomenal. Giants in '90 was phenomenal. But the Dallas Cowboys' first Super Bowl for me uh, with Troy Aikman. Um, I jumped on the cowboy bandwagon um, when they got uh, Jimmy Johnson and they got Aikman. And that first year, I think they were, they would just, I think they won one or two games. And then the following year, they had like a superstar team. They drafted everyone because they sucked. And when they won the Super Bowl and they obliterated the Buffalo Bills, it was on my birthday, it was at the Rose Bowl. Um, I think that was the most insane championship ever out of everything. And I was never a diehard Cowboy fan, but I just jumped on them the right time. And it was on my birthday, that Super Bowl, and they fucking won. And then they became like a dynasty. They became the best team ever. So um, the Islanders totally destroyed me because I won yeah. four straight. So yeah. In other words, you can never do that again. Yeah. Like literally, even nope. you know, no I jumped one's done on the it Yankee since. Band- right. I jumped yep. on the bandwagon with the Yankees in 96, then 97, that shortened season where they lost, I think, the Indians. Uh, beat them and then they won 98 99 2000 that would be the second most insane thing because you know they had like five of the greatest players ever that's never happening again it's never happening i mean the red sox had that run they had amazing players but i don't think their team still even though they did they've dominated baseball with winning the three championships they were not the 98 99 2000 Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. they were not that yankees you didn't have gita you didn't have rivera you didn't have all these pictures you didn't have like Joe Torre being just so classy. So I would say the Islanders winning four straight was inhuman. And then bandwagging the Yankees winning those three is probably, you know, my second insane greatest moment. You know, when the, when the Rangers won in 94, uh, I rooted against them so bad every fucking game. I rooted against them in game seven against the Devils. I was at Madison Square Garden all the time screaming because I opened my big fat mouth and I promised like, so many people that if the Rangers ever made it to Stanley Cup, I was treating everybody for tickets. And I'm a man of my word, even to a fault. It cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. The worst I've ever made in my life. 
Uh, so, you know, I hated that championship, even though I was at, you know, all the home games there. Uh, I'm just trying to think what else was phenomenal. Uh, I, I Listen, the Knicks, bro, I hate Michael Jordan to the day I die. You know, <laughs> you guys love him. I hate him because he broke my heart for yeah. my life. I had tickets. I had tick. I spent over a million dollars on Nick tickets. I sat right behind Pat Riley, right behind that bench, two rows. When Patrick Ewing took a break and put his fat ass in my face, sweating, <laughs> and he drank his water and threw his water in the garbage can. That was the same garbage can that when I'm eating French fries, I'm throwing in. That was inhuman. So uh, uh, hmm. I hate Michael Jordan to this respect the fuck out of him. Greatest player ever. No issue, um, but broke my fucking heart. That's how sports are supposed to I would, be. I would, I would have paid a, I would have paid anything. I, I to to for the Knicks to win. I was so upset. They just would. They needed the point guard. They needed Tim Hardaway, and for some reason they wouldn't. That he was on Miami, and Pat Riley wanted him, and we needed that key point guard, and we would have beat the Bulls. We would have beat Michael Jordan. And they didn't want to pay the money, and we just couldn't get there. Hmm. That's you know, a lot of broke my fucking heart. That's some great I broke uh, my fucking heart. That's some throwbacks, great right stories. There. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. cool. Dave, oh. wh where were you in the Sox one? I was at the Foundry in Aurora, Illinois. Oh, all right, Uncle Bobby. Yep, he was there. He you was were DDing. I was DDing. We got booted from the bar because I wasn't supposed to be there. My dad threw a fit, and he the guy tried to take his beer from him. He goes, don't touch my fucking beer, man. And the guy was like, okay. And he slammed it. We got out of there. Did a little more bar hopping. I DD'd. And uh, it was, I'll remember everything about it. Every single thing about it. Start to finish. Skip school for the parade. Um, it was it was like the best week or two of my life. Didn't you get fired from your job because of I did. Yeah. For the, yeah, it was my first job working at Target. Um <laughs> It was playoff baseball. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> no, like, to I'm not going to stock shelves in the we'll dairy aisle for fucking the only White Sox World Series run. I have seen t in this, in 33 years of living, like I knew that it was probably going to be a, a one, uh, you know, one hitter quitter. And it was. And had to, you know. Yeah. It was either work at Target for seven bucks an hour or go and watch the White Sox. And I did it. You made the right. I, I still refuse right. to shop Simple at decision. that Target, that exact Target. You made the right reason. choice. I did make the right choice. Yeah. Okay, Chief, you're up. Uh, first time driving without with yep. your license. Yep. So that is like that's what you, I was you, down to. You put the put the stereo up. That's like your to me. That is your first real true taste of freedom. Like you could have mm. been dropped off at the mall or a friend's house or something like that, but this like you're on your own. You have your car. You have some <laughs> responsibility. You have some freedom. Uh, it's fucking great. So good. here's a little quick funny story for you. Okay. <laughs> so in my driver's ed class, it was this kid I went to high school with. If he were in prison right now for the rest of his life, I wouldn't be shocked. His name was Alberto Morales. We called him Pito. And he would drive himself in a car, one on one, two driver's ed. I swear <laughs> to God. And the teachers would freak out every time and yeah. he'd just laugh. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Shout out, Pito. Pito. Pito Morales, mm, yeah. Um, Great pick. This was high on my board. Yeah, that, I was down to those two for sure. There's something just, and it's so oh, weird. It's so what's weird. your yeah. What's your month? What's your birthday month? November. October. You're October. Mm -hmm. so you came early. Yeah. So you were one of the first guys with the license driving the boys yes. around junior year. Why did I think yes. you were like late driving to homecoming? You drive to homecoming. Uh, or did you take the boys to any uh, road game football games? It coincided with homecoming, but you didn't want to drive to homecoming anyways, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, well, no, I mean, obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. not, but I'm saying, like, you know, you were driving around like... Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I had know, a buddy, hey, let me get a ride. Yeah, I had a September buddy who, who beat me, and he, that was huge, but... I miss getting rides, giving rides, getting rides. It's just not a thing, right? Because because Uber, but that was like a big, that was like a huge part of having like a ride network in high school. Like, yeah, yo, yeah, ride? that's true. It's like the look when you're like, you look at that front seat and no one's there. It's like, whoa, whoa, mm -hmm. this yeah. is crazy. It, it was yeah. weird. We fucked yeah. around in the in in the car quite quite frequently. Oh, and yeah. the, like, do, I feel like the the how you get your li license is always a moving target. Like I had to have like maybe six full months or a certain amount of hours. Yeah, with, I think it was six with uh, a parent or like yeah. somebody over the age of twenty five. So like that to your point, being like, oh yeah, all alone. So it, it was that that to me is like a very memorable first time. Oh yeah, yeah. I agree. I, this is this is high on my board. And then Eddie, even though we're not supposed to do it because it's illegal, so this never happened. Even though I'm going to say it does, smoking marijuana and blasting music and driving in a car 
it's as good as having sex. It really is. When <laughs> a great song comes on, you know, Tom Petty, American Girl, you're just like, you just bang into it 115 <laughs> and a 40. You just, you can't fucking, you know, it's the great, it's just great. You feel like you're, you feel like you're special. You feel like you're, you know. Yeah. You're, Stu, you know, what was just, your first car? Just, uh, my first car was a 1971 Delta 88. And uh, my second car was an AMC Pacer. And I, I can, it's, I never forget it because Sandy never wanted to have sex in the car because when we were kids, where'd you have sex? In the car, you know? Like you really didn't have sex in your parents' room. You have my room mm. at my parents' home and stuff because, you know, your parents just knocked on the door. My parents would never let my door close because mm-hmm. they knew, you know, my father's like, listen, I don't care what's going on, but your door's staying open. You know, I, I, it's, I'm your fucking father, and I want to hear what the fuck's going on. I, you're not banging a girl. You're not doing drugs. You're not drinking. That door's open. So we would have to have sex in the car. And the AMC Pacer, I don't know if you don't remember what it looked like. It was like all mirrors. It's like this circular car, the worst-looking car ever with mirrors. But my father's friend had a deal on it, so I got it. And uh, so it was AMC Pacer. And then my next cars after that were all brand new because then I was already making money at, like, I was already making money in 1982. I bought my first Corvette, and then I bought 84 of my first Mercedes, and then mm-hmm. 86, mm. I bought two more Mercedes, and then I was off to the races. That's great. Yep. Um, good pick. Good pick. Uh, me again? Yeah. All right. So next pick for me would be first time walking into a major league stadium. So like that feeling where you're like, I was little. Uh, my first. Uh, real baseball game was uh, first real professional sports game of any kind was Fenway and I just remember like the buzz I remember seeing like that the the Sitco sign and like walking through it was with my uncle and my dad and they're playing the Tigers and you're walking through and it's dark and then you come out and it's like whoa like what is this so your first like professional for, for me it was baseball so I said major league stadium but I guess it could be if you want to broaden it it's fine but first first time in a major league stadium Love it. I think that's fine. It's it's fine. No, I don't like, think about it often though. Like if it, we're talking eighty five Bears or 05 Sox or two thousand sixteen Cubs, all the Blackhawks, that never ever leaves conversation when you're with the boys. You're not talking like oh, remember that that when we were eight years old. There's one that I would have taken but in I the do, fifth round so if it was you. up there. Would have been the first time you walk up the steps at Wrigley and you see the Ivy. But to me, that's like. You know that's a very specific one, and I think that's one Cubs fans call to. But it's pretty, it's pretty niche. Um, I think there's a couple ballparks it applies to, like Wrigley and Fenway and stuff. And I don't even remember the first. It's time it's more it's more of a. Um, I, I don't think I, I was saying it's fine, like just to take Major League Stadium for the. Mm-hmm. I wasn't saying I didn't think you need to specify, but uh, it's more cool. It's cooler when you're uh, the dad doing that. You know, you're the, bringing, your, bringing your kid yeah. for, for the I first bet, time. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would yeah, say, yeah. I would guess, you know. Definitely. Um, and that's why, so, you know, I probably we don't remember it as much, but you're right. There is something like, I mean, it's it's like, it's a pastime bringing someone, your yeah, kid to it's a, like a ball, generational your first thing. time at a yeah. ball game. You went, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it, I just remember that being like an overwhelming experience. Yeah, yeah. You know, like seeing that mm-hmm. many people, that big of a field, that big of a, of a stadium, like it was... It was great, and I and I actually I have pretty vivid memories of every sport going into it for the first time. So like that was probably you know ages six to seven or seven to eleven, you know, before I checked all those boxes. And I I feel like I remember each one of those experiences like pretty vividly. Yeah, walking into a stadium, Stu. Um, when I, first time I was in Shea Stadium, I'll never forget it. Um, I had to pee. And my mother was like, listen, just like, we got to get through these innings. And I'm just like, I got to pee. So Shea Stadium, I hate it because you have to wait in a line to pee. But the experience you're talking about would be first time I was ever at a, a stadium outside the state of New York, uh, which would be Fenway Park for the 86 Mets Red Sox World Series. Going to that stadium was inhuman because it was fake. It still looks fake to me, but then it was fake. It's mm-hmm. like a fake stadium. Everything looks like it's not real. First of all, you can't spit in the fucking seats. Second of all, you can eat like unlimited. They had these unlimited hot dogs. I don't know if Finway still has like the, the hot dog bun that has like the crust on both tops with the dog in it. And like I ate like six of those 
And then I had those little ice creams. I don't, well, I'm going back to 86. Who knows if the, if the food's still like this? But they had these little ice cream bars. So Fenway Park was was that experience for me. You That's know, good. Shea Stadium, I was excited, but I was I was nervous. You know, when my parents took me, I don't know, they, they fought a lot, my mother and father. So like, we could be anywhere, any, and all of a sudden they break into a fight. So when I went out with my parents, it wasn't like, hey, let's go. It was like, please don't fight. Please don't fight. They would always fight about something. It would be like, it would be crazy. Like, and it was only me and my brother. So anytime I went anywhere, you know, baseball stadiums, my father never took me to a football game. I only, only Shea Stadium. That was only baseball. I never went to basketball with my father. Never went to hockey with my father. Only, only uh, baseball. And uh I was always scared going there. I, uh, I want that thing. I'm scared. I'm like, I'm like, don't lose me. I don't know why, but my first, <laughs> I always, even when me. I was a little kid, and I, even when I was a big guy, I told people I was scared of being lost. Like, what would happen <laughs> if I got lost? Like, how are you finding me? Like, yeah. there's so many people. Like, I remember when I went to the bathroom, I would hold my phone. Like, don't, don't go nowhere. No, no. He's like, all right, I'm here. What are you doing? Just be. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want you to leave me. I'm like, I'm not leaving you. He'd be screaming. <laughs> like, shh. I'd be like, you know, it's crazy. Relax. Yeah. Fenway Park would be the, the there you that, go. that mm-hmm. experience. Right? My mouth open, feeling like a little kid, like I'm in mm-hmm. Disney World. Uh, White Sox, Dave, you're up. First legal drink. Mm. I so I got in a lot of trouble, not like bad trouble, just constant underage consumption <clears throat> tickets my sophomore year of uh, college. Naperville, Illinois, they didn't have anything else to do apparently other than bust our party. So it was like five or seven. I got whole baseball team was getting in trouble constantly, and clock struck midnight, October thirtieth of what year would it have been? Eight two thousand whenever. And I was in line at Quigley's, and it was like 11.58. They're like, really? I'm like, really, bitch. Let me in that fucking door. <laughs> and I was handed that Miller Lite, and I was like, I finally fucking made it. Can no longer get in trouble for just consuming this product. Now, were you 18 or 21? 21. Oh, okay. 21. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because when we were kids, it was 18. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My so dad, we I think, he said that he... He was he could legally drink, I want to say, and then he like missed it by a year. He couldn't legally drink anymore, or something like that. Like switched yeah, they, it they after. Changed, yeah, yeah. They, wow. Yeah, they changed it. They changed it in nineteen, like so seventy eight, seventy nine. They changed it in nineteen eighty one, I think, twenty one. I'm surprised that the, it wasn't like grandfather. It was something like that. Yeah. We I'm getting 18. the details wrong, but it, there was some overlap where he couldn't legally drink, even mm-hmm. though he could have previously something like that. Yeah, because we had fake proof at fifteen. We were in bars at fifteen hmm. drinking. So That's wild. I always the, the key the key to being getting in trouble and having all the cool shit is that you have brothers you have friends that have older brothers because mm-hmm. then you could take their fake proof. We would hang Mister. We would sit in grocery store parking lots and bribe the clearly twenty one year old kids at twenty hey, bucks. Hey Mister is what you call it. Hey Mister, interesting. Hey yeah. right. Hey, could you get me a right. yeah? Hey Mister, can you buy can some you- beer? Yeah. Did you guys drink when you were young, Mad Dog Twenty Twenty or Boone's <laughs> Farm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I got oh. a drinking ticket to drinking Mad Dog 2020 at oh. wow, you like Illinois the grape? State University. Well, you like more grape, blue, orange? What's your favorite, uh, Stu? Mad Dog 20, uh, that was the red cans, right? No. I threw up no. it all. I it was a red it dog beer. Oh, that's what I was saying. Never once did I not drink that and not throw up. It's literally. disgusting. Like, literally. Our fraternity Ugh. used to haze kids by putting Mad Dog in the fucking dishwasher and running the thing for like, you know, 30 seconds of commercial dishwasher <laughs> where it's like super hot and boiled water. And then you take the thing, you can hardly hold the Mad Dog because it's so hot. <laughs> and then you got to pass it around and drink it. We had like a Mad Dog crew and they made them chug like fucking Mad And not, you can't <laughs> take your lips off the bottle. Like you're just fucking <laughs> oh, Yeah, those were fucking reckless dog, times. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Brutal. Oh boy, but we were we cool when it when we were doing it you know (laughs) yeah so first legal drink of alcohol is uh, does this i'm wondering if this crosses some things off no first legal drink is fine first legal drink so because you go in there it's the process they card you they look at you you're confident you know it's not cross off first time at a bar no 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 No, this is the first you're walking in there it's your 21st birthday and you're just you have confidence i didn't i didn't my first 21st wasn't a drink at a bar i went and bought a case of beer we were like on spring break for yeah. baseball yeah. or something. So mm-hmm. I went to the Publix, mm-hmm. got a case of beer. But the feeling of walking back with that case of beer, like, I hope a cop fucking sees me yeah. carrying yeah. this yeah. case yeah. of beer. Yeah. Like, yeah. fucking yeah. come and stop me, dude. Motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
All right, legal drink of alcohol off the board. Carl, you're up. I mean, I'm left no choice. I got to take the first time having sex and just yeah, like, you know, I, it, it can't go any longer. Now, I listen, it, I know it has been awful for some people, but the what you don't realize for a lot of people, though, is it's like, okay, so for me, I'm 18. I'm with my first serious girlfriend. I didn't really have like a serious girlfriend in high school. I had got a couple blowjobs in high school. You know, like I wasn't that fucking, I don't know. I just wasn't having sex in high school. Wasn't I wasn't that guy. Get me to neither. college, get to a serious relationship. You know, you're getting blowjobs regularly. You're like, what the fuck? Like, this is fucking crazy. And then it's just like, you're spending time together and it's like, what are we? We're boyfriend, girlfriend. And I was like, I definitely want to have sex. I, we got to have sex. Like, I want to have sex bad. Like, you know, you're <laughs> like, now you want, and then you're just like talking about it. And it's like, hey, this Friday night, like I, and I'm open and honest, you know, I want to lose my virginity. We're going to do it. Like, we're going to go out. We're going to fucking go to that party with your friends. We're going to come back just like a little bit early. And then. You know, for some people, they say it can go one way. Other people, they say it can go, you know, another way. Like we had sex, we, we had a ton of sex. It was like crazy. It was like this whole thing just like opened up to you. We were like, oh my God, this is the best. This is the best thing of all time. And that's all where my head lived for like the better part of a decade. It was just like, this is all I want. I just want to have so much sex. I love this. And well, so. Why do you say bad pick, Dave? What's, where's the. Because the first time all, it, it's always shitty. You, no one knows what they're doing. There's so many moving parts. Yeah, but it's more so awesome. just. I didn't lose. So yeah, but I didn't lose it, it to a virgin yes, either. Yes, that that's also true. That's also true. That's the point. Um, I, I lost could, like, my, my girl. With the girl boys. I lost it yeah. to had a very serious boyfriend through high school, so it was like really. She showed you the. Ropes. It was like calming to be like, "This is how we're. Gonna, this is this is good sex." I think you know, the other thing though is a lot of people lose it when they're drunk, they're at a party, and it's the first time they can have sex. Mm -hmm. Like I think a lot of guys are just like looking to like the first time they can get it in. They're like, oh yeah, like of course those aren't like gonna be McLovin. great experiences because it's just like. Mm -hmm. But I think there's other people that are like, yeah, we were 17, 18. It was a girl that I like. You know, you're like, yeah, summer love. You're feeling really good about yourself. Um, but I, it's also kind of a hard out pick. I think if you take losing no. your virginity first first round, I think I think we were all a little nervous about taking this one the first. Like, oh, it's not good. It's not a good I, one. I think after Stu took getting your ass eaten, the the floor was open. Okay, so <laughs> well, Virginia, yeah, yeah. I know. Virginia, to me, this was like the first time. Yeah, anything, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We first time draft. To but me, it's instantly. A, it's obviously in something that popped in my head, but yeah. like kind of like to Dave's point, like it was not like. It was almost like I, I would want to have first time you had good sex. Yeah. You know, exactly. like I was so nervous, you know, I don't know. Yeah, like I was, it was shitting my pants. Yeah. Like I had, <laughs> a, I, it here? was not like, it was not like, the, it was almost like the second it's time crazy. was better. That I hope, I hope, I hope I, I hope there's a greater portion of people identify with like no, the excitement I, and eagerness of like, it, it's, gonna it's, fuck all and it's gonna be yeah. awesome. Like I'm finally having sex. I would identify with you. I didn't take it because I have something else in mind. Okay. But, um, I know there's another, yes. there's another couple picks and play where I was yeah. like, but sexual. I don't want to isolate the yeah. audience. Yeah. I want to get the ladies involved mm -hmm. here too. Yeah, 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 Just yeah. like Stu, that's it. That's a gender neutral thing. Everybody's got an asshole and they all deserve to be eaten in some respects. And, uh, uh, and sex exactly. applies to both sides so yeah true i got a, i got a good one here so the first time i ever had sex oh here we go uh, was with my wife sandy <laughs> oh wow i it's beautiful so march march 11th was the first time we kissed and then took it to the prom in june and i think it fucking in gotta get laid at the prom She's like, there's no fucking way. You're never, you're not, that's not happening right now. You know, I won't, you know, like she had the mentality, Irish Catholic. Um, She was a virgin. I was a virgin. Meanwhile, I'm jerking off at least four or five times a day. <laughs> then begging, you know, like we, we had sex. I was able to play with her titties, you know. You know, I, I didn't know about eating ass then. I didn't know about licking pussy, nothing. Nobody, nobody told you shit then. You know what I mean? So. Uh, I basically sex was begging, you know what I mean? She's a 10, I'm a six. That's really how it went. She was the most beautiful fucking girl in the school, third prize prom queen. And I'm just, you know, I'm funny. I got a big mouth. I make you laugh, but you know, I'm not nothing to look at to this day. I'm not, but, uh, so finally we see the movie. I think it was the movie, the band, and they had a movie in the movie theaters. We go see it. And one of the songs was. If I don't do it, somebody else will. And I'm listening to this fucking song and I'm like, I leave this movie theater and I'm steaming right now. It's like, uh, I don't know, school's over. So it's like a week after school. And I'm like, listen, we got to have sex. If we don't have sex, I love you. We don't have sex. I'm just going to go find someone to have sex because I have to have sex. I, I mean, I'm dying. I, I'm dying. If I lose you, I lose you, but I got to have sex. 
I said, it's just like that movie. Somebody's going to do it. Might as well be us. So July 4th, uh, we got super drunk. And we're at my friend's house, 4th of July, 1978. And then we went into his mother's room. And we did it. And she bled all over the fucking bed. Now it's a real fucking issue. Jesus. It, first of all, the first experience, I was scared. I thought I heard her. I'm like, what, do we have to come high? You're bleeding. You know, like, like I came and like, if I lasted two minutes, it would be a lie. You know what I mean? Like, it was, it was like, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And then, obviously, she didn't come. I don't know if she came the first three years she was with me. Like, literally, until I figured out to get a vibrator, and then I got to play with it. You know, like. How I do you play, ask? My, my partner, well, I, I, my, no, my partner, who I, in business taught me. Uh, so, let's say that was. She probably didn't come on her with me, let you know, having her come for about a year or two. She would play with herself because I didn't know what to do. Like I really did it. If someone doesn't show you what to do, what the fuck are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. Until I figured out, you know. Then it was the, you know, then eat the ass was after the clitoris. You know, mm -hmm. you, said you have to eat the vagina. My, somebody taught me what to do. Then they taught me to buy a vibrator. And I'm like, wow, this is fucking great, you know. And then I'm off to the races. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I wow. she bled right on my friends. Do you have a flashlight, Stu? Say it again. Do you have a flashlight? What does that mean? That's like the um, jerk off thing. The pocket pussy, yeah, right? The po yeah, like no. it, it's like a pussy no, or an never... asshole, and you can put it on your no. dick and jerk off. I think with my it. sons bought those things because they were hidden under their beds. I've seen them. <laughs> okay, but I've not. I've never used them. No, no, no I don't. It goes do that. after me. That's the next level. There are uh, there are people who swear, but I could, I couldn't get around to it. Uh, that's just I, something I've never. It, I haven't. Like, but I mean, obviously, I would like. But then the thing is, it's one of those things where it's like. Once you cross that line, yeah, it's tough. I don't like, know if it's you something you can go where back you, yeah. from. And and the name is just so gross. It is it's a pocket pussy. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's oh, so a flashlight nice. might be worse. You think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah like the, the asshole has been molded from yeah, Adriana like, Chechik's. Yeah, to my my friend had like a football. I was like, dude, that's like weird, right? Like you're fucking yeah. a football. What? It's whatever. a little weird, I would That's say. That's a yeah. It's, yeah, uh, it's kind of weird. Strange. Yeah, like get me my good, get me, get yeah. me my good flashlight. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, the mold people buy the molds. Like and my buddies are like, yeah, I bought Riley Reed. Like, <laughs> not gonna lie, dude, it's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. Can, can I ask you guys something? Just a, a random thought here. Do you hear? Do you hear about the shit that brides go to Tennessee and fuck randos for their bachelorette parties? Have you heard about that? No. Are you I, talking I mean, about a little just, place called Nashville? Yeah, like literally. Do you, like like my, my friend, my, my son's friends, all of them, I mean, they fuck brides. Yeah. They go there and fuck brides. What, like it's not like... It's a, scary, the, isn't it? They just pick no, them up? No, the thing. There's brides everywhere. Just get, for some reason, Tennessee is the hottest bachelorette party yeah, yeah, yeah. in the world. That's where everyone oh, goes. Oh, yeah. You're just saying but, that. Like, but I mean, I don't, I, I didn't know that the bride is going there to get banged. I yeah. Mean, you know, like, hey, I, hey, take I it know. easy, buddy. My is wife did her. <laughs> Mrs. Carl did her bachelorette party in Nashville. I just I just texted Mama Carl right now to make I'm sure just get confirmation that she I'm wasn't sorry. getting stuffed on my watch. I'll, I'll see you. <laughs> Thanks, pal. No, but I mean, is that crazy? Does yeah. that make you uncomfortable? Yeah. Literally? Yeah. But Bro, that makes me Yeah. The shit that happens, you know. You know, it's wild. Yeah, I guess it goes both ways. It's not like it doesn't go both ways. Oh yeah, it mean, definitely you know, does. You know, like it does go both ways. But I mean, wild. Yeah. Wild. I thought wild. he was saying like there's a town where brides specifically line up. Oh, you mean like yeah, like it's a special trick. It's like some retreat yeah. in Chattanooga. Yeah, you're just saying <laughs> no, some no, fucking no, no. Yeah. some the some place. fucking drunk They're girls at honky tonk <laughs> with their sash that go home with some dude. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I believe that. Yeah, yeah. you're going in picking off the menu a la carte. Yeah, I'll take exactly. a DP in the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, last question before my pick, uh, Dave. Any uh, advice to the younger stoolies how to deal with the blood situation? The blood situation? Yeah, like Stu said. Oh, someone... I, I got nothing. Haven't been uh -huh. in that spot myself. Oh, um, okay. Adapt or die, Ed. Adapt <laughs> or die. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, what what did you do? What did you do, Stu? What did you do? I, I told my friend, and he was fucking pissed at me because the blood went through into the fucking oh. into the mattress. Had yeah, to yeah, yeah. The, the mattress. mattress had to pay for everything. Did you just flip the mattress? No, I was scared. I didn't know if that was natural. I kept, I you know, I had to rando go ask people. You know, that was even more humiliating. What my, you know, my uh, wife was humiliated. Jesus. I was humiliated. It was a humiliating situation. 
Yeah. I, I had a buddy through a party and he was banging this chick and, his, and somebody was having sex in the parents' room and the girl was like squirting everywhere and they had to flip the mattress and he had to like bring, <laughs> brought another guy in the next morning and was like, it looked like a fucking murder scene on the mattress. <laughs> and so the guys flipped the mattress and then it was like a joke for years. Like, did your dad ever flip the mattress back over? <laughs> That's Good very Lord. funny running yeah. joke. Um, holy shit! All right, yeah, dude. I mean, you got getting high and just get, having sex one two punch. Like, I mean, for graphic perspective, you, that's that's a knockout. Off to a good start. Yeah, you're off to a great hey, start. Hey, yeah. stay away from the V eight now. Stay yeah. away from the V eight. Yeah, for sure. But like, I think like people said, like having sex, it doesn't. But mm -hmm. yeah, criticism to both. There's yes. opportunities in both where yes. it could completely go wrong. I'll take that risk. Yes. All right, it's to me. Um, I'm gonna go with the first real paycheck. Ooh, good one. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you just get out of college. I was or whatever. hoping that was going to get back to me. It's like, wow. Like, you mean I could, like, I don't got to worry about this? It's, yeah. it's a nice it's feeling. The, it's the best feeling on earth. I remember seeing mm. that first paycheck that was, it was quadruple digits because I had never had a job. So it was like my first summer job in college. I've talked about it before I worked in that factory. It was fucking terrible. But the pay was pretty good. And you're like, wait a second, like, is this a misprint? Like one thousand dollars or whatever yeah. it was, yeah. and it was like, wow, like I am fucking rich. Mm -hmm. It was great. It is. A, that's a great pick. It, it's nice for sure. It's and then that's like a great time in your life. You and all your all your buddies got in the same situation. It's like, yo, let's do this now. We could we could afford to go out here now. Yeah. You know, we I remember to, being like, let's go to Country Thunder. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, like we too. yeah. We should do stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mac McDonald's. Let's go to fucking you know. Let's get some steaks. You know? Yeah, it's like yeah, it's just different. Yeah, let's go to Gale Street with yeah, boys. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, real paychecks. My pick. Nice, very good pick. Good pick. Yeah. Um. All right, Stu. It's back to you. You got two picks, Stu. All right. Uh, first time I ate acid. <laughs> and, and when I'm specifically saying eating acid, that means you are hallucinating like you've never seen in your fucking life. Like it's a cartoon, like it's a movie. So, so uh, we had this guy, uh, his name was Mountain, and he was in Central Park, uh, New York City. And he's about, I'd say six, eight, with blonde hair down to his fucking ankles. And he has a frisbee, and he has these two giant Doberman pinches. And he throws a frisbee like 50 yards, and these fucking dogs would grab it and come back. So we would buy acid from him, and it was specific called blotter acid, where if you put, like, um, let's say even chemicals in an eyedropper, and he would drop a blot, and it would become like a little circle. So we would buy on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper a hundred circles for a hundred dollars and then we would go home to farmingdale cut them in quarters and sell each quarter for a dollar so i'd spend a hundred and i'd make 300 come back with 400 so we go home we eat the acid we're in my friend's house it's three of our friends and we're like nothing's really happening here nothing's really happening and then all of a sudden you would just like, it would be like, wow. And I would be able to take my finger and go like this. And there would be thousands of fingers going this way. So if I did this, it would be like a hurricane like this. And then we went into the bathroom because the guy told us, don't look in the mirrors. We're like, what the fuck is that gonna, you know, someone tells you don't, you gotta do it. In the mirror, no, you melt like you're gonna die like all of a sudden your face becomes melting and it's a skeleton and like we fucking flipped out so we had to take towels and cover all the mirrors in the fucking house and we're just sitting there like and you would throw something and you would see trails and it would, you would just laugh uncontrollably and there would always be one person in the group that would have a bad trip that's horrific person would be hysterical crying screaming running around punching themselves in the face meanwhile we'd be laughing at the person because we're having a great trip the person would have a bad trip but i would say the first time i ever ate acid was absolute 11th grade absolutely just the funniest situation ever and then when the parents came over at my friends they're like 
why is every mirror covered in the place? We'd be like, I don't know. We just didn't want to look at each other, but it was like so funny. But I would say the first time I ate acid, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. So, Stu, I, I've never done it. Can't I, relate. I, I got to say, I thought you went, I ate, when well, the first time you ate ass. Yeah, that's I thought what you I thought went too. back to back. Oh, no, ass acid, eating. ACID. Yeah. Okay. So, first time you ate acid. Okay. Acid. Yes, okay. Acid. All right. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I can't relate either. Can't yeah, relate. I haven't done. I I mean, I would love to do acid with you. I haven't done the acid before. Uh, some other hallucinogens, but certainly uh, or psychedelics, I should say. But um, anytime. Sounds Stu. sounds 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 crazy, Stu. I just want to. Sounds crazy. Are listen you gonna to this, so, offer Ed any acid in no, a couple no, weeks? No, listen. So so let me tell you how. So I tripped maybe about 150 times, and then. Uh, I well, almost almost the end of eleventh grade, we tripped every day in school. It was in school. We did it in school. We didn't give a fuck. You know, we were pretty confident. You'd have to be confident to do it because if you were insecure and you had insecurity, you literally could lose your mind. You literally could break down and have a nervous breakdown. Literally. So, but we had a good group of kids. We were always the, you know, we were always the, uh, you know, the cool kids in the school with the drugs or concert tickets. Um, so. Uh, I lost, I, I lost my fucking train of thought here. What was, what was I saying? Too much acid. Oh, maybe you don't do it anymore. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I go to Pat Benatar at the Palladium <laughs> in Manhattan. Take acid, so psyched for the show. And all of a sudden the lights go off, and there's this devil that's in the top left of the stage, like shooting like laser beams at me and laughing at me. And I swear to God, I don't remember anything about the show, but just shivering like like this. My Sandy's like, are you okay? And I couldn't even talk to him. But like an hour and 40, I didn't talk until the lights came on and I never did it again. It was mm. the worst, it, I wish I died. Like I wouldn't, if I died then I would have been fucking happy. I don't even care about that. It was that unbelievably scary. It was like a horror movie that didn't end. This little devil was like little, and he was laughing at me, going, ah! He's like, ah! And he's like, lasers would come at me. I'm like, ah! I was like, it was, I was sweat, soaking wet sweat, and I never tripped again. That sounds and terrible. Moment, what year was I that? never trip again. What? What year was it? How old were you? 1980. Oh, I was, okay. Uh, I was 19. Okay. That sounds wow. 19. Horrible. Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. you That's lived more by the time you turned 21 than I did my yeah. whole 36 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, Definitely. Yeah. Well, again, we we had a we had Tommy High School was was filled with drugs, and my brother and my friends, brothers' brothers sold drugs. So then we sold drugs. You know what I mean? Like they were in 12th grade, then we came in at ninth grade, and we started selling in 10th grade. So that's always again. I lived above my ages because of my mm -hmm. friends brothers who were always older and then they had multiple brothers so you know we were ex we experienced a lot of things that other people didn't like I'll, I'll never forget i never thought i was ever going to have sex in my life we went to this party and we watched this film of this girl being fucked by like a donkey Jesus by like a Christ. horse and it's I against the law in some fucking states. I said, uh, I said, I'm, I, it, I, it was bestiality, obviously. But I said, I'm never having sex again. I never had sex ever. Like it, it, it ruined me for like two years. You know, talking to women. I didn't even talk to girls. I was like scared. I'm like, it was, it was, it was mortifying. But you know, see, it's a good with the bad. <laughs> Unbelievable, Stu. Um, what's your, uh, what's your third round pick? What's your next pick? Um, I would say, uh. The first time I saw a movie, went to the bathroom and had to sneak back in to see it again, which was The Empire Strikes Back. Mm. Uh, it was me and my brother. The movie ended. We went to the bathroom. We're like, I can't believe Luke is his father. How is that possible? I, and it was Darth Vader. It was like, like the most evil. Like we really believed it was real. Went to the bathroom. And we and we doubled back. We snuck right back in and saw it again. So I would say the first time I saw a movie back to back, mm. and that Empire Strike Back was probably to this day my favorite movie ever, 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 ever. Better than The Godfather. Better than It's a Wonderful Life. Better than anything ever. Empire Strikes Back. 
So I, so I, I, I so this is like a little, is this, it, would that be okay the first time I saw a movie back to back? Yeah, and I'll do all the exact movie right after each other. Yeah, seeing ass eating, eating ass, and seeing a movie back to back, that's, that's, I didn't see that one coming. I didn't see that coming here. At the time, there's nothing better than that by his back because we were such Luke Skywalker fans and we hated Darth Vader after the first movie. Like, we hated him. Like, I was like, we hate you. We, we're, we're with the Force. And then it was like, Luke. I feel like that's yeah. a that's a big detail. It should be seeing Empire Strikes Back back to back, right? Done. right. Yeah, seeing Empire Strikes Back back because that, that is. But Empire Strikes Back is is widely considered like the greatest movie of all time. Yeah, and yeah, but like I, it, no issue, yeah. no two ways about it. So I think that's different too. Yeah, so it's not the act of just sneaking in. It was. That's the Empire the, Strikes Back. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll get what do you think? I mean, I think it's a great pick. I would have loved to be able to go see that movie in theaters. The Battle of Hoth, the opening part of that movie is like, two, it just holds up. Like, you watch that movie today, and the fucking thing holds up. The size, the scale of it, it's still just like an amazing. It's an amazing movie. It has to be awesome on like the real big screen oh, too. Fuck, I can't imagine. Yeah. I haven't seen it on a big screen. Oh, I mean, it was. I mean, it was. It was unbelievable. It was just. It was just. Life changing is the best I could say. Life changing. Yeah. The only movie I could say like like one of those movies was. Did you guys ever see uh, the Star Trek: The Wrath of Khan? No. With Ricardo Montalban. No. Can't say that. Oh I my have. god. Oh, I was one. That might be the greatest movie ever too because it was it was from a specific Star Trek episode where they took these um, superhuman people that were trying to take over this earth and they grabbed them they put them into they put them on a um a planet and the planet died and blew up so they moved from that planet to another planet and then when captain kirk was just on one of these missions he came to their planet by accident and it was like you don't remember me do you and he's like what are you doing on sete alpha five and he's like this is not sete alpha five this is selfie the Alpha Six, and then and then he captured them. It was like one of the greatest. Things yeah, ever. you got to see that movie, The well, Wrath of Khan. Wrath, Wrath of Khan, the greatest right. Star Trek movie ever, and the greatest Star Trek episode from 1966. I enjoyed the most recent ones with Chris Pine. Oh, okay, so oh, he's great, Chris Pine. Yeah, no, yeah. he's great. He's great. Yeah. All right, so seeing Empire Strikes Back back to back is off the board. Right. It's to me. Um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna go horny. Uh, seeing tits for the first time. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that would have been my number one sex pick. Yeah. Running away. Seeing tits for the first time. I think Madonna did a softcore porn that was on Showtime in the early '90s, and I, I want to say those were the first pair of tits I saw. No, I'm talking real life. In the in the flesh, right? I, oh. yeah. I think it's either, bro. Like, it's, oh no, but a movie that's so much different. No, no but that's when you so like first experience. become aware of what tits are, because by yeah. the time you see tits for the first time as a person. You know, like you're already interested in her puss. You're already, you've lost. In, there's a point in the time, and like a boy's life, where it's just like boobs, boobs, it, boobs, boobs. Yeah, boobs. It's a soft it is different that. though. So I guess at my, I guess I should make my uh, seeing boobs in media, maybe. Okay. And then like, if does that make sense? Because that's yeah. what I'm thinking. But like, I still like, I still vividly remember my cousin, <laughs> uh, my cousin Matthew. Like he had the uh, the sable Playboy. Uh, you guys, I, re I remember guys. it. I remember that. But like Carl, yeah. you know, dude, WWF Sable. She yep. had the hands on the thing. Oh, and I remember the like Playboy. Sable. Yeah, he like took me into his room. He went in those fucking those drop ceilings. You know, the fucking uh, whatever they are. He pushed one tile yeah, up, little, yeah. brought it down, and then he opened the Playboy. And uh, it You're was like, Sable. And I was like, holy shit. There's a lot of younger kids that are probably listening to this that don't realize how lucky they, oh, they got yeah. it. Like we used to have to work. For yeah, our... but those sable tits were great, Dave. Like, no, those were, that I'm... was a big moment. Getting the Carmen Electra sure. fucking Playboy yeah. and going through that thing. And like they don't realize as a kid watching WWF, like all you wanted to see was Sable's tits. Like, like you know what I mean? Like you were so like wow. And listen, respect to Brock Lesnar. I don't want him to kill me. But mm -hmm. you know, you remember those like those bikini contests they had and stuff. And you're like, man, I wonder what. And then to see them was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> holy a shit, new, a new man. <laughs> yeah, you right know what I mean. So. Um, I'm fine. Listen, I think what you guys said too in life is great too. I know we're talking about other picks, but it's brought up, whatever. Um, but something about seeing it in media was just, it, was, it unlocks a new layer of your brain. Mm -hmm. It really does. Love that. Stu? I love that. Com uh, just when uh, Common Electra has an OnlyFans uh, page, that. OnlyFans uh, site now. She just opened it up off her 
she was uh, she has new life because of that uh, the Jordan episode thing with with her uh, with her being in it. Oh, with Rodman, Rodman, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So now she has, she just opened it like yesterday, like an only only fans call mm-hmm. lecture. I mean, in her day, she was insane. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Unbelievable. Um, so yeah, seeing boobs. Same boobs. It's a good one. Um, happy to take that from Dave. Uh, well, maybe. Okay. Carl, you're up. Your first SOT. No, I'm not. That I, I, w- I was trying to make a joke off the S. Do you remember that SOTs? Hmm. I don't think I know what you're talking about. So. Sucking out tits. No. Oh, oh, that was like a thing oh, like, yo, okay. I SOT'd or, you know, when you're, when you're really are breaking down the categories. Oh, yeah, <laughs> SOT'd. Never, never did, actually. Yeah. SOT'd, sucked out tits. Uh, first concert. All right, so that's different than a sporting event, and, and for a lot of reasons because you you don't really go to your first. Con- I don't know about you guys. I didn't go to my first concert with my parents. It was like your first time you're away from the house. You can go into Soldier Field. We saw Dave Matthews. It was me, Brian, Kevin, then a couple of their friends. Um, and being like the eighth grader going into freshman year, wearing my fucking old navy cargo shorts, getting to tag along, like wearing the Dave Matthews band concert t shirt that my brother got me from the summer before, and then getting ripped on the entire fucking day by those guys, being like, dude, what do you think? We're going to a Bulls game? You gotta wear like a jersey and support these guys, yeah. you fucking loser. Um I was cool, like sneaking beers and like even though that wasn't like a part of of I would never in a thousand years ever want to drink alcohol when I was 14 years old and all that stuff, but it was like, oh my God, I'm at a Dave Matthews concert. Like I'm smelling marijuana for the first time. Like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna split that beer with you. And like, <laughs> you just felt like just uh, like a free man. And, and then especially walking out of Soldier Field afterwards with like that huge mass of people and it's like midnight and you just had like your whole life rocked in this like great concert. And you're just walking around like you're on you're on fucking cloud nine just like man i'm fucking one of the boys this was so sweet so i'm taking your first going to your first like major concert huh. i would say because there were some times though like when i was in i remember going to like my my oldest brother has juvenile diabetes and we would go to these like charity events you know the jdrf gala and stuff and they'd be like you know you'd go there and it'd be like uh paul revere and the raiders are playing or something or like diana ross is going to perform this year the four tops or something so like those were musical performances that I got. Insane. That's not yeah. what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about when they fucking drop the lights, yeah. the place goes black, the band comes out, goes fucking nuts, your first concert. Yeah. Definitely memorable. Yeah. I can't, it's. I remember mine, but it's the same thing. Like I like I wish I had that experience. Mine was with my parents. It was, mine was, yeah, mine, mine was, was Dave Matthews at Alpine, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Right. Unbelievable yeah. first concert. That's like a rite of passage yeah. for yes. Midwest yes. kids. Yep. Going, yeah. to, going to Dave at, Al- well, I guess that's another one. Is like, that's a sub one off of this. Is like yeah, your yeah, first yeah. time at Alpine for a Dave yeah. concert is a huge deal. What was yours, Steve? Uh, it was Toby Keith at Tinley Park. Oh, okay. That's I not saw- bad. It did was, you guys have God. seats or sit in the lawn or did dad we, get we, some hook up on the sky box? It was not a sky box. Like, I don't remember it being in a box, but we were definitely on an overhang. And it was the day the Cubs traded for Nomar. Oh, great day. So a great day. one of the all time greatest yeah. days of my yeah. life. Yeah. Where was that for that? I remember that day too. But uh, they, had, they had this thing where they, you could like text something and it would play on the... Uh, the like screen. on the screen, so people were like texting, and like every other text oh, yeah, was like, about no more. No 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 yeah. So we can, who fucks no more. Yeah, uh, mine was Backstreet Boys. It's a good one. Did yeah. you go with your that sisters? Been a good one. Yeah. How old are you? Like eleven, ten? I was young, bro. Yeah, I was very. Young. I, I asked my brother center. one time. I'm like, hey, can I get? Can I buy the Backstreet Boys album? We went to the mall. We were in like sixth grade. I was in sixth grade. He was in eighth grade. And I was like, hey. we went to like Coconuts, and I was buying an album. And I was like, what do you? What, I'm thinking about the boy, Backstreet Boy one. And he was like, yeah, no, dude, that's a good album. I'm like, yeah, seriously? He's like, yeah, dude, you should definitely get that album. So I'm like checking out to get the album. And I turn around, I look at him, and he's, I catch him laughing. I go, what are you laughing about? And he's like, you're really going to get that album? I said, not if you're going to make fun of me. And he goes, let me tell you something. If you come home with this album, I will. there will not be a day in your life that you live he without being reminded. Too, Everybody did. I think it was it more was about like him. He can't time. have the bro. It can't be like, yeah. oh, did you hear your little brothers listen to Backstreet Boys? Yeah, you fucking I bought the pussy. Album. Yeah, that's tough. That's funny. But uh, I like the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, everybody it was decent. Did. First loan concert was Green Day. So I mean, it was you know, ooh, yeah, that's a good it was one. interesting. Both at the All States. Stu, I'm just gonna assume yours was yes. Yes, <laughs> it was. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right, there you go. That's the Coliseum, yeah. Because I would, um, the, uh, 
again, the older kids in the area were all progressive rock and roll. Yes, ELP Genesis. So we we were we went to Yes with them. Yeah, that was my first show. Mm -hmm. That was my first show. Beautiful. And then from from there, it just went. All right, real quick, we're going to take a break from the snake draft to talk to you guys about Upstart. Stu told this beautiful story about buying his dream house that he saw when he was 12 years old, calling a shot, going back, getting that done. And if you want to have a chance at a story like that, you got to go to Upstart. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online, simple, easy to understand payment terms. And it doesn't matter if it's credit cards, consolidating that debt or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment to clear off uh, your debt. So that is so confusing, this credit cards, if you have multiple, they have different interest rates, different payment dates, you know, it's hard to keep track of all that stuff. Go over to Upstart, they can fix all those problems for you. And rather than looking at just your credit score alone, Upstart's models consider other factors like income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between 1,000 and 50,000 without impacting your credit score. That's so huge, whether you're going to buy a house, they go through every single detail They, you know, to check your credit, make sure it's okay. It's so important to get that uh, updated and accurate and paid off in a way so you can get the right, the right kind of rates for your house. Upstart, great solution for that. You can receive funds in as fast as one day after uh, accepting your loan. So. Check your rate today at upstart.com slash Eddie. That's upstart.com slash Eddie. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Guys, go check out Upstart. Best way to get organized. Make that Stu Finer story come true. Uh, White Sox Dave, you're up. Hitting your first signer. Unmatched feeling, I'm sure Stu you got a bunch of these under your belt. I only got a couple. Well, I don't know what's a signer. Where you got to pay tax. You, you hit a bit bet so big, oh, you have to pay taxes oh. on the spot. Like, they don't give you your cash right there. You got to fill out the tax forms. It's called I a call signer. It. A signer, yeah. I, I call it a clipboard. Oh, is that what you yeah, call it? Clipboard. We had my dad. I, rem, I well, my dad wasn't there. Let me get a clipboard. Part. And it's like, fuck yeah, they're bringing out the clipboard. I don't have a name. <clears> for I was it. 16 years old at Lake Delavan Dog Tracks. My dad, <laughs> it was my dad, all my uncles, grandpa was there, my aunts were there. And we, my dad just took a fucking beating throughout the day. So he went to the hotel early. And my two of my uncles and I had six bucks left. This was after my 16th birthday. So I had like a couple hundred bucks of birthday money. And um, I had six bucks left because this is, you could walk up to the teller and they weren't IDing anybody. So I was gambling all day. And um, hypothetically speaking, of course. And I had six bucks left in my wallet. We put, uh, it, was a, it was a race, I want to say in, like South Africa or something. It was like midnight. And uh, we hit a trifecta, a long shot trifecta. And my uncle goes, I think that's going to be a signer. And one of the guys, just some random guy at the bar was like, oh, that's going to be a signer. And it was 2,100 bucks, <laughs> split it three ways. So I won 700 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it was, I spent it on like Chipotle and a pair of uh, subwoofers for my car. That and you brought that dog it. home with you. <laughs> I did not bring the one. I was thinking about bringing the Greyhound home. But Dad did you let me. honestly though? That had to be part in your head where that hits the best. Like Dad, it was. It was a horse dog. race. It was at the dog tracks, but oh, it was a okay. simulcast horse All race right. that we that we hit. Um, and then I've hit a few since then, and it's like when you hit those, you're like, oh, it's the uh, best feeling on earth. Lake Delvin a little underrated. It's gone now. They're all gone. All the dog tracks up there mm. no longer exist. We would, we would do a family trip up there once a year when I was growing up. We used to do sales conferences up at, up there at one of those uh, right next one of to those Alpine resorts. Valley. Here's a great little story for you. We're up there. We're at the sales conference. We're out boozing. You go up on like a Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, and then you do some like motivational thing on like a Wednesday afternoon. You go home on Thursday. Go back to work. You go back to sales, and. It's like the Tuesday night get together and we're in Lake Delvin, Wisconsin. We're in a Chicago based sales organization that sells throughout the Midwest. And one of the sales guys just got really loaded and grabbed this girl's ass. And she's like, what are you doing? And he's like, that's oh, a you know, sweet ass baby or something. And the guy that was with this woman was like, dude, what the fuck's your problem? And like a fight breaks out, right? The, the fucking <clears throat> guy who gets, who like, not, I don't wanna say like beats up the sales guy, but he like, you know, there's punches thrown and he certainly asserts his dominance. Turns out, just randomly happened to be one of our bigger contractor clients from ooh. Wisconsin. Tough just, break. Ooh, just happened to be in the right spot. I was like, hey, aren't you the guy who does my fucking property casually in Chicago? Mm. 
We lost that client. That guy yeah, also I, lost his job. Uh, Stu, I would, I would agree. Do you, <laughs> where did yes. where did where did betting on dogs rank for you? Where where does where does dog race uh, dog race ranking? They used to have um, them at Aqueduct, right? The only time I've ever been to a dog track is in Alabama. They're still um, big in the South, yeah. Dog tracks. Huh? And uh, oh, yeah. they got one in I Iowa. I think it was fixed because we we were with like six guys and we lost every single race. Yeah. Is, it was just like, I think it was fixed. I don't know. It looked fake to me. Yeah. That was the only, and it's fast. It's so quick. You know what I mean? It's like, I you know immediately show. if you either won or lost. We lost every single one of them. So dogs was never my thing, you know. Did you ask, well, uh, dude, did you call it a ahead. signer? Did you ask him that? Yeah, what oh, did yeah. you call it when you had to sign? We called them signers. Um, be honest with you, I've never had that happen. Really? Never, ever, ever, never. Because most of my main money when I was gambling was illegal. Yeah. You know, basic bookmakers. Yeah. yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I, you know, there was nothing. There was nothing. You know, there's, I think I've you hit know. three so of that, my So that 70,000 hit, like there's none of that? No, no, that's well, that's, like, that's blackjack. No, 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 that's, okay. that's different. No, no, at casinos, craps, at, yeah. no, at casinos, it was you. Casinos uh, up until I don't know when they changed where they actually ten ninety nine you. That has to be like early two thousands. Oh really? Yeah, that you that was on. If you want a million dollars, that was on you to pay the taxes. Oh, you, wow. and you could you, just go like, around the casino. casino and pick up the losing tickets too, and just counterbalance the the taxes so you wouldn't get them. Isn't that right? I don't know. No, now well, it's like I if you well, I mean, I've heard, I mean, in theory, you, I guess you could do that because you could write off your losses against right, yeah. your wins. Yeah, yeah now it's like if you that, hit a but, pair plus right. or you hit a slot, like they'll come right away before they even pay you out and you fill it My out. My buddy's dad hit the bad but, beat at the Aurora Casino, the Hollywood Penn Property, beautiful casino, on the poker table, and he's like, it took him, it took me three hours just to, forever, yeah. so they checked every single camera to make sure there was no like inner table need hand motions or cheating going on mm -hmm. and they he ended up getting the money he won like 35 grand after taxes and uh but yeah they'll they'll hand you that clipboard right away yep. my buddy just hit a twenty five thousand dollar slot it's nice yeah mm. competitor but, nice. Yeah. i think the i mean i wanted to say the threshold when Let we hit it was like 1200 bucks i think it was cp was it? Oh, my, nice. my wife Fuck just won yeah. a uh, $25,000 scratch off like five months ago and it's 9000 in taxes. Whew. Oh, wow. That's nice, though. All right, hitting your first signer. Hmm. Fucking getting that first big win was nice. It's, it's such a good feeling. Yeah, that is a good first feeling. Time. It's nice. All right, I'll go a little sentimental here, but your first day with your dog. Like, you pick up your dog and you're like, this thing is going to be with me for 12, 15 years, hopefully. And it's just like you just, and then you start to like do the math in your head. Like when I got George, I was 32. I'm like, I'm gonna have, I might have this dog until I'm fucking 50. And it's just like you, like the realization that you have this thing and it's with you for a long ass time. And it's like, you're so happy about it. And it's like, but like the weight of it, like this is my guy. Like this is my mm -hmm. guy for the next 10 plus years. It's, it's a- It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a weird, it's kind of weird at the same yeah, time, yeah. but it's like, I, I have like, I've had four dogs in my life, but I would say I remember the one I got as a kid when I was five. I remember like how I felt that day. And then it's more obviously more vivid with George because those two to me were like, these are my dogs where the other ones are, were more about, were more the family, even though I ended up with them at the end. Um, but yeah, the first day with your dog. Mm -hmm. I love it. Shout out Aria. Shout out Aria. What kind of dog I is Aria? Dog is, what? What kind of dog is Aria? Um, well, I mean, she's a uh, boxer terrier. As far as we know, she's from Louisiana. She was a rescue from yeah, the that's, Animal House. That's yeah, that's probably somebody. pretty similar yeah. to my dog. Yeah, I love, but I love her. You know, I love her really as much as I love my wife and my kids right now. To be honest, like it would yeah, be, it's if, not, if it's not kids, far off. My kids or my wife died and my dog died. There'd be no difference. Literally, no difference. First and, time uh, getting a dog. You know, yeah, that's a good one. All right, Chief, take us into the fourth round. Um, I'll take touching the tit for the first time. So that was that to me because that I also had like that happened for me in eighth grade, and then I didn't I didn't grow I didn't grow for years. So I had no like sexual encounters like basically until I was seventeen eighteen. So like that moment to me was like like you said earlier like you're obsessed with it. I remember where it happened. I remember it, and I was like, this is fucking it. Like I did it eighth grade touching a tit feeling great 
And then, yeah, then it was just like, you know, wa- wandering. After that. Yeah, <laughs> wandering the desert for 40 years after that. But that was, yeah, that was that was a big day. Did big moment. touching it coincide with the first time seeing it or no? No. No. Okay. Shirt, shirt right. was a hand underneath, shirt was on, but it was still like <laughs> you're making out and you're like, make the move. And it was like the move that wasn't like swatted away or anything. It was like, all right, this is good. This is a good day. Yeah, and it's so funny because in hindsight, it like it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, and it's like especially when you can't see it, like yeah. you just said, it's, right? It's, but then it's like you know you kind of you, you, like, you recap dude. it with the boys. Do you remember and, yeah. like I remember not one, first time I touched your tit, I was like, whoa, it feels, it feels like that. Like that's what it feels like. <laughs> like it was yeah. it was not what I expected. What did you expect? I don't I don't know what I, I know. expected. Firmer, softer, a bag of sand. Maybe a bag of sand, <laughs> but it was it was like it didn't feel like there was anything inside mm-hmm. it. Almost, I don't know. Interesting, going that over seeing him in, in real life. Yeah, I would say that that was that to me was like a better better than that. Yeah. Stu, anything about touching a tit for the first time? Um, I'm not a tit guy. You know no. what I mean? I think they're you're an ass guy. It's well I mean? established. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a, my, I mean, like, I, I mean, when I break it down for, in a woman, if you ask me, first time, I, first thing I do is look at the eyes. Mm-hmm. Eyes have to be the whole story, and then the hair, and then you know the box, and then the ass. I'm not a tit guy. <laughs> I think tits are great. It's a waste of flesh. You know what I mean? I'm just not, you know, I'm not sucking on them. I mean, I'm not squeezing them. I'm just looking. Uh, I don't know. I'm looking to get down to the vagina and the ass and come and let's go have a. Twin cheese with bacon, large fry vanilla milkshake with a piece of lemon meringue pie. All right. It's mm-hmm. my MO. It's really how it rolls. The box. <laughs> Sounds like a beautiful night. <laughs> White Sox, Dave. Perfect night. <laughs> um, I am going to go buying the house for the first time. Mm. It's like a weight off your goddamn shoulders once you get done with the whole process. It is like you're spending so much fucking money, so yeah. much time. All these inspections, seeing all the houses, getting told, putting an offer in. Oh, sorry, they took, just took an offer. It's very stressful. And then when you finally sign, and it takes like an hour and a half to sign the dotted lines because you're signing a thousand different things. I'm not even reading what I, I wasn't even reading what I was signing. But once I was finished, I was like, fucking finally. It is an unmatched feeling. It's a good feeling. It's a very good feeling. Stu? Um, My parents well, never owned a house until I was like in high school. Well, I mean, to uh, the house that I'm living in right now is my dream house. So I worked here as a landscaper in seventh grade. Uh, and I told the owner in seventh grade, by the grace of God, if I make any money, I want to buy his house. And then when he died in, uh, so that was 1974. When he died in 1989, he called me and I bought the house. And it was a 7.8 acre estate at the time. It was 1,900 square feet on 7.8 acres. I used to mow the lawn here and sweep up. And uh, the owner of the house was William Schwindler. And he was the co-founder of Grumman Aerospace. And he built all the World War II fighter planes. Hmm. And vice presidents used to come into my basement. And, uh, you know, so I can relate to your feeling because, you know, you go after your dream. Your house is a dream. You know, it's the American dream. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah right, 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 right. And uh, yeah, so I could uh, that that would I can so relate to what you just said, you know. Stu, that's a and great story. That is a great story. That's that a great really story, is. Stu. Landscaper. Aim high, yeah. shoot for the stars, land in the moon, or whatever the fucking. And it's, and it's funny because there's a cul-de-sac directly across from me. So I used to be fucking Sandy, my girlfriend at the time, that became my wife. You know, I'm fucking a doggy style, and I'm like, I'm going to buy that house one day. And she's like, shut the fuck up. Just fuck me. Stop already. And I ended up buying the house. <laughs> so, you know, dreams can come true, baby. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Uh, 940 my SATs, 550 math, 390 English. So Dude, anyone can do it. You are you are one in a trillion, Stu. Unbelievable. <laughs> Carl. Um. So this is kind of like a, I don't know how we'll describe this one, but it's a basically like it's gonna read like the first time you have a beer with your dad, but like there's this there's this window where like you're not 21, where you can't drink when you're at home in high school. You know, like it's like get that fucking Miller Lite out of here. What are you doing? You know, like who's this blonde? That's not Joey Gibson's fucking Miller Lite. Mm-hmm. You know, 
But then there's also that time when then you go to college, you come back. So for me, I came, I went to college, I came back freshman year. And you're like in the house, the and limbo, it's just like yeah. a Saturday, and like the White Sox are on in the garage, and my dad's watching them, and like my mom's in the kitchen watching the Cubs, and like, you know, you did the yard work, and you're like, hey, I'm gonna sit down here, and you like walk over to the fridge, you open it up, you're like grab a beer, you kind of make eye contact, like you're like, go ahead, kid, you're cool with this, right? And it's like. Yeah, go right ahead. Don't dude. tell your mom. And you're just like, holy. And then just like, I, even telling you that story, I did feel like a weight come yeah. off me again. It's now like because a reset. it's like, it is. Now you're like, wait a second. I'm in this like weird, vague spot where like, and then, but the only places then where it's cool for you to drink, it's still a little uncomfortable. Like, hey, we know you're going to go out and have fun with your friends. Don't do anything stupid and all that stuff. I get that still. But you go to family parties then. You go to the graduation parties, the 4th of July stuff, and then you know you have free reign to open up the beer cooler and, and you kind of mix it up with the uncles and your cousins yep. and stuff. And you're like officially become one of the guys in the family. And that starts when you have your first, like it's For your first beer. Drinking with family? Yeah. For, you don't want to no. say first beer with your dad, huh? Because that was on my list. I mean, it'll. I, we could say first beer yeah. with your dad because that's, that's what I want. I just don't want it to come back and be like, well, I don't really remember my first beer with my dad. Oh, I think that really? captures. Well, I, I think some people would come in and say like that's kind of a vague thing. I but remember. I'm giving mine, this like very right. specific. Was, yeah. No. And yeah. It, I think it's. I don't know. At least for me, very similar. Yeah. Okay. Where it's like it wasn't even. I didn't have like the whole eye contact thing like you're talking about. But it was just. It was definitely that time period, and like casual. And it was like you kind of like, all right, we're in a different place than we were yeah, before. Like, like a year ago. Yeah. There's no way I was going right. out there and be like, what are you doing? You're going to college. But like right. you survived that first year of college, you come home and it's like, yep. yeah, you, you got this figured out. Nope. Like you could have a cold one. Very good pick. Excellent pick. Yeah. I was hoping that would get back to me, but sorry. Good Sh pick. Shout out to the Godfather. How we find him? How we find him? And just out of curiosity, Stu, I see these yes, pictures sir. with your dad, you know, at the party and the chick sitting on his lap and stuff like that. Does does he still, is he still, get, you know, he enjoys that. He likes a girl sit on the lap and, and kissing oh, him and stuff. Or what's that like? Listen, he has never seen a woman that he hasn't hit on. I mean, my, my mother, my mother died in 2002. Okay. And uh, so he's been on the prowl since, let's say, 2003. I mean, he is the ultimate flirt, the ultimate woman's man, and he's just got to wait. People love him, but yes, he's never seen a woman he didn't love. You know, he just, you know, 85 years old, he's in a, a rehab right now in Massapequa, and he just, two days ago, he just, he's, he's got COVID now. 57 people at this fucking place have COVID, and horrible. Oh, but it, it, you know, he's good, he's double vaxxed, and he's got the, uh, he's got the booster, and he's okay. So, but he's talking to me about, he, him and this girl that he just met, which she's 84, of the talk of the rehab. So he just loves it. You know, he loves he loves women. He loves people. And, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, obviously. But, yeah, he's a he's a woman's man. He always was. And they love women love him. They really do. He's got that way. You know, he just really does. The Godfather, Howie Finer. Yes. Um, shout out, Howie. Shout out, Howie. Um, all right, it's back to me. Like, see, I know you talked before, Chief, about how, like, there's you, you guys didn't have much on your board. It's one of these as we go longer. Like, it's like there's so many things to draft. And I'm very conflicted. There's a lot. Um, nobody's taking this yet, so I guess I'm just going to do it. There's a lot of um, legal drinking, drink beer with that. Uh, drinking illegally was fucking a big moment in your yeah. life, too. Yeah, that's big. That's a big first time. Like, you know what I mean? I like, remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How it old? was. I was. Boom. Were you in sixth grade? Ed? Yeah, I was in sixth. Yeah. I was in sixth grade. Yeah. I thought that was a joke. No, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, there's no way. I mean, Eddie, Eddie's yeah. a, those guys just run different up there. Mm -hmm. I was in sixth grade. I'm probably the only person that did that and just hasn't fucking smoked yet. But so yeah. that, that's yeah, a fun true. fact about me. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. There's some. I think it, we, it was Bacardi. Um, and mine was Bacardi Green Apple or whatever. Was it, and I got so blackout wasted drunk i never will touch that shit again to the day i die really i was puking my fucking brains out was it at your one buddy's house where like for for us it was the buddy whose parents were from poland and they were like in or out of the house working like construction jobs weird hours and stuff and they didn't not give a fuck at all i feel like if you get one of those parents where it's like oh Everybody's yeah got, they, yeah 
Yeah. Every group friend in Chicago has like the parents where it's like, oh yeah, they're they're, they're the was, Irish carpenters or whatever, and they just get fucking loaded. Yeah, it was New Year's Eve. It was at my buddy Jeff's. He had a house that like it was an apartment, and him and his brother lived up. You walked up, and then his parents lived, you know, on the first floor. So it was a yeah. perfect setup, and it was it was the it, that place was the best. Yeah. It was awesome. So. There was something about that, and everyone's like, oh, man, look, look at this. Look at us. So valuable <laughs> to have a place, like, would you, oh, would you rather have yeah, the shelter or another valuable one? We had a guy in our, in our grade um, freshman year who got his driver's license, like, in May. He was, like, held back or something. That was obviously Crucial. so huge to have a dude in May a couple months early before the license came out. But having shelter. And having a place you knew where, like, we can hide the booze under a blanket, it's going to be when we get there. Then you give yourselves a couple days of chatter on AOL instant message, tell the girls, tell the girls at Mother Garen, hey, we're doing a little thing here, a little happy hour. <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was great. Drinking out, drinking alcohol, drinking illegal, illegally, I guess, is my... Uh, first drink. First drink, yeah. First so drink. first drink. Yeah. So, I mean, I assume everyone... Who are the kids from St. Tecla's, the hard, heavy drinkers up there? Who really, what What junior high? A lot. Ours? We were big. Borgia kids were big. Uh, Tars kids were animals. Hillary's. Um, that was Hillary's was big for you guys. Yeah. I was asking you. Oh, no, Hillary. Nah, that, not, no. Uh, that was a little more. Uh, you met those guys in high school. Barnabas, but Queen of Martyrs. Those are our those heavy hitters the on the South Side. St. John Fisher can't be trusted. I know this is a national <laughs> show. We just got <laughs> yeah. super local here, but it's just a funny thing for me. Yeah, so it is funny. It. People will enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I see kids were wild, too. Um, Stu, drink. You could make your pick or you could dr first drink. Well, I mean, I, I, first, the first time I drank was the Mando 2020 with my you know with my friends and we were with their older brothers and uh you know we drank we had a great time and you know it threw up it was gross i mean you know like that mad dog 2020 and that boone's farm is just horrible oh, boone's farm I, mean, I could i i could smell it on my breath i could just throw up right now in front of you just thinking about it but uh i got a couple like how many more do we have here because i got some really good ones how many how many you get two here? more you get two more two Stu. More. but then right, after so. after it's over well we could go over honorable mentions so so you'll be able to okay. list them off so probably the first time my son had a full page uh cover of the newspaper Mm -hmm. And he was uh, he was all Long Island, all Metro. So he was ranked 187th uh, best football player in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Uh, that was 2012. He made the Boomer game. He played uh, linebacker uh, at Hofstra University with Boomer Sison and Craig Carton. They have this Boomer game where the best of Long Island plays against the best of New York City. And... Uh, he was my best he was my best athlete out of my children i uh my oldest was a valedictorian super smart 1580 sats 2280 the new way you know brilliant one of the smartest people i'd say in this country he's that fucking smart photographic memory everything all for my wife i'm a half a dummy you know that you see that i'm not smart i'm funny um i'm exciting best guy to hang out with not smart anyway my second kid alex was a good athlete uh but stopped. My uh, third son was always the best athlete in every sport he ever played. Baseball, football, basketball, soccer, anything. Which people hated. Because I was this big mouth, loud mouth, <laughs> hey. You know, when I coached, I coached all my kids in baseball, football, basketball, soccer. And the way I play, and I taught my kids this, I don't sneak up on anybody. I don't want to sneak up on I want to tell you I'm the best. I want to tell you I'm going to beat your motherfucking face in. And I'm going to fucking do it. And if I don't, and, and there's a lot of times I got my ass kicked and hair ants and kids pissed on me. And I, I take it. I can dish it out, but I can take it. But this kid was absolutely direct opposite of me. He was the best at every sport he played and never liked the way I carried on. When he was the pitcher, I'd be screaming, strike this kid out. I have the book here. He struck out three times already. Strike him out. Stop throwing balls. And he would be, you know, embarrassed. He didn't like that. But anyway, so I pushed him hard. We won a ton of championships. I moved him from a catcher, where he definitely would have been a Division I player, to a pitcher. And of course, as a pitcher, he was throwing like 83 in like eighth grade. And I, I knew he was like, he was in sixth grade. He played on a ninth grade travel team because three of their pitchers got hurt. He was a sixth grader. 
and threw a no hitter on a travel team. So he was that good. He was literally that good. And I, of course, I'm an asshole head coach. I'm a moron. I'm looking at, I want to win today. You know me. It's the Super Bowl, no matter whether I'm eating Captain Crunch, a uh, bagel with cream cheese, or we're out at a bar. It's the Super Bowl. I make that day when you're with me the Super Bowl. So I'm winning championships with him. Fucking gets Tommy John surgery. I probably blew his arm out because mm. I pitched him too much. So no sports, 10th and 11th grade. He had the Tommy John surgery at Hospital Special Surgeries. It was Mariana Rivera's doctor. Okay. And he doesn't come back from it. So the summer of 11th grade, we go to see Dr. Dines, which is the um, Olympic doctor for the U.S. Uh, tennis team. He was supposed to be the best at this. And my son had a torn labrum and torn shoulder capsule. So they said they need another 18 months worth of surgery. It'd be a surgery, 12 to 18 months of rehab. He would have missed his whole 12th grade year. He's already missed all sports 10th and 11th. Uh, he says to me, Dad, fuck it. I don't care if I can't throw anymore. I'm not having the surgery. I'm not having the surgery. She so walks onto the football team, doesn't start until week four because he didn't play 10th and 11th. And Farmington High School is a tremendous football organization. He has 113 tackles, third most in school history, and leads us to the NASA County Championship. So I would say, still chills go through my body. I bought like 500 news. So on the cover of uh, Newsday was uh finer farmingdale wins nasa county championship and it it spoke about my son the entire article which everyone hated matter of fact you know what i mean like mm -hmm. you even people who liked me said they were jealous you know you you know <clears throat> you know kids are jealous parents it, it was horrible but i would say that would be probably my proudest moment ever I, I bought like 200 newspapers. I dropped them off at everybody's thing. Everybody's high fiving me. We went to Hofstra. I was living on cloud nine. It was amazing. That, so I would say that was uh, so my son full page Newsday article. Perseverance. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <clears throat> Another good story. Is that better than watching those kids be born? Ten times. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> fucking 113 tackles. Let's get killed. Let's be fucking real. NASA County Championship, you know, our, our rival, NASA people. My son made 14 fucking tackles and five straight at one point. Are you kidding? Fucking 130 Best tackles ever. are popping out of the womb? Easy question. Yeah. Easy question. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. And was that the last time? That? This was the first what? time last time, it sounds like. Was it, or was he in it again? Um, Were any of your kids in it? No, that was, that was my, uh, my youngest boy. Uh, was a, a lacrosse player for Farmingdale State, mm. and he had a good he had a good career in Farmingdale High School as a lacrosse player. He was a D midi. Nice, but he but uh, he he never no no never never the accolades that the third kid had. Yeah, he was he was scary, Psst. and he wasn't that big. He's five nine, and he's not he's not super fast, and uh, he's not super big. But God, is he smart? And he just read that fucking hole. He read the hole, and we had an amazing team where. We, we had four people on that team that almost went to the pros. And one of them is uh, is uh, the uh, receiver for the Detroit Lions, uh, Tom Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And that was the video last year where Tom Kennedy plays for the Detroit Lions as a receiver. He flies my son and he flies his ex quarterback throughout his whole years to the Lion game and they threw a pitch play and he threw a touchdown pass. Oh, nice. It was wow. unbelievable, wow. unbelievable. I and Go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry, you keep going, Sue. Oh, and then it was funny because when um, Big Cat and PFT and everyone came to my house to do a Pardon My Take episode, uh, the one where I was on with Ja Morant, um, <clears throat> Frank the Tank made fun of him because I said, hi, this is Tom Kennedy. He's on the Detroit Lions, and Tank just shredded him with, you know, Detroit Lion jokes. So it's pretty funny that it comes back where he throws the touchdown pass and then uh, Big Cat's like, that's the guy that Tank pissed on. It was really good. So, you know, it's apropos. Um, Stu, I'm interested in your fifth pick here. You by far have probably the most interesting board in snake draft history. So uh, okay. what, what, the last pick of the draft. This is an amazing one. This, mm -hmm. this is an amazing one. Okay. This is an amazing one. Okay. So now I'm the all-star catcher in seventh grade and i haven't grown since seventh grade so seventh can relate. eighth grade eighth grade at five literally five four right exactly five four and three quarters i'm still the same size 
seventh grade. So I was an amazing athlete in seventh and eighth grade at everything, everything. And um, I'm in the All-Star game and I throw three people out in the game. And I hit uh, three doubles, including a bases clearing double uh, in the top of the last inning to win the game for us because our pitcher shut him down the next inning. And walking off the field, and I, I get I like a baby, I can almost cry thinking about it. That is the first time that my father ever said, I'm proud of you. Mm. Oh, wow. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, he didn't say I'm proud of you until I got married. After that, he was a tough motherfucker. He he was tough. You know what I'm saying? He just, you know, he just didn't like. He told me what I did wrong to correct it, rather than build me up. You know what I'm saying? It it was that type era. And he, when I came off the field, he gave me a big hug and a big kiss, and he said, "Sid did a great job. I'm proud of you." So it's hard I would say, too. Mm-hmm. I would say, uh, you know, when my father. Uh, said he was proud of me that's beautiful Stu. Stu, you are one of a kind you really are ed when's the last time your dad's told you he's proud of you i mean i'd have to think about that yeah, maybe probably not recently for sure not semi-recently <laughs> i would say <laughs> what about william williams it's been a minute <laughs> every every father's day every father's day when dave calls up his dad he says happy father's day dad and he goes you know what dave i'm proud of you i don't have to say the same thing back to you yet mm. I, I like the joke um i honestly would have to think about it yes yeah, you know what's I funny think. is that a lot that- of times he's told me like how could you be this fucking stupid that's usually how it goes I don't gotta borrow money or anything from him, from him anymore, so I think he's uh, I think he's proud of me for that. Would you let him go on dog walk if Stu sat in on the interview? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Come on. That's I mean that's just asking for cancellation. I remember a, a memorable time that was when we were in the paper. Yeah, when we were in the Sun Times. Yeah, that was cool. That was probably one like he got he got uh, I remember my he dad got saying. that from like people he worked with. He's like, what the fuck is this? I'm like. <laughs> I don't know. I found a stack me. of newspapers in my dad's, uh, in the crawl space at my house. We were like getting Christmas decorations out. And they're from when I played at Illinois. There was like a 2008 article on me that from, because I was like a walk on and I had probably done like, I think I made like 10 straight appearances out of the bullpen without giving up a run or something. And I had kind of like built a name for me. So they got, whoever followed the beat writer for the Illinois baseball team in the Champagne Gazette was like, hey, can I interview you? It was like the biggest deal. I think I ended up getting like 400 words. It was like a side article on the back page where it was like, Illinois Sturk living dream. And it was just, you know, like some nice thing, right-handed pitcher, Mike Sturk is coming out of the bullpen and this and that. And I didn't know my dad had all these copies. And I was like, dude, why do you have all these papers? And he's like, you kidding me? You kidding me? They put an article about my boy in the paper? You think I'm not buying these out? So it was funny listening to Stu yeah. tell that story because like, on a much smaller level, this was not a big but, thing. But I had not a, It wasn't like I had won any awards or anything. It was just like a routine Tuesday afternoon article in like the Champagne Gazette just to like meet the quota. But yeah. it was about me and my dad. Like I never, I was like blown away. I think I cried when I found him. Mm-hmm. So. No, that's cool. Touching. Good pick, Stu. That was cool. Um, all right, it's back to me. just tough there's a lot of shit left do you if you guys feel that way behind me or no i got i got a funny one for the fifth round do you yeah i got a good one nothing brings me joy so this has been a tough exercise here really yeah i I don't know this one's i guess kind of lame now and and that like since society has evolved so much but getting that first cell phone was fucking awesome like, but do you remember that? Like, I, I was yeah, like, yeah, you're right. I, I, like, it was, dude. You, what was you, it? What'd you get? T-Mobile? What'd you get? Uh, Flip, U.S. Cellular. Say, U.S. Cellular. U.S. Cellular, baby. Yeah. Um, like, you know, what I mean? I, I, if, especially if your buddies had one before yeah. you, and like yeah. your parents would call them, and be like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? It's kind mm-hmm. of embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, like my buddy might be like, hey, your mom's calling us. Like, all right, you know. And then when you get yours, it's like, oh, I got my. You got the phone clip. Right? You're riding your bike around. Like, you're. Oh, you had one that early. That was a big time. I got mine in eighth grade. Okay. I got mm-hmm. mine. So two thousand four. 2005. I would have been right around then too. Freshman year, maybe. Going into sophomore year. Here. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't I put think, the thing yeah. down. You fucking, you're T9 in a way. Like it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sophomore yeah. You, year, you I had to split one with Kevin. 
Oh, how did that work? So he was, I was a freshman. He was a junior. My dad would drop us off, and he'd just be like, all right, here's a phone for the two of you. Let me know if you need anything. Yeah. And so Kevin would just hang out on the phone. But it, yeah. but it would be, it was mostly just for, like, getting rides or, like, yeah. 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 But like even, they used to charge you per text cent. Yeah. Cent. Oh, it was, yeah. like, 10 cents or something, I want to say. Yes. And I'm going to even sell my pick more here. This is a great moment, too. You don't have to fucking call people. Like, people, girls at cell phones, was, too, is that huge. That was such a rush. Oh, that being on the phone a, with a girl. Yeah. yeah. Like, you or know. just being, like, hope her dad doesn't pick up. Yeah. So, like, like in theory, that. like how far we've come, it's kind of lame because kids get fucking tablets at four now. I know. Yeah. But like, all my like nieces you know, and nephews have like iPads. And same. Stuff. And it, but I get it. Like, it's just the way times are now. But it's like at that time, it was fucking mm -hmm. huge. And yeah. like, same with a puppy. You never put that fucking thing down. You're adding contacts, ring back tones, ring, ring back tones, tone. whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. The, it was the fucking awesome. Yeah. Song. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You pay to download them. Stu, you definitely had the fucking... Uh, you had the brick. You had the brick. The Zach Morris Cutting song. business deals. I mean, we. I the thing about the cell phone that, uh, at the beginning, uh, I hated it because every other call was someone asking me for money. Yes, <laughs> I can see like, that. Can I borrow money? Can I borrow this? Can I... You know, it was like... Because uh, I was the only person that had money you know, out of my friends. You know, like... You know, I come from basic, you know, basic blue collar. My father's still broke. He's been broke his whole life. And everybody I know pretty much is broke. So but when I was young, I mean, look, I, I made a I made a quarter of a million dollars at 21 years old. So, you know, like, think about that. And uh, so I hated the cell phone. I was afraid to pick it up because I knew. And I couldn't say no. Like, I could not say no. That was the problem. So, like, I would have to negotiate with everybody. I'm like, this guy's going to hit me for, like, 400 all I'll settle on a hundred. I'll, I'll immediately offer fifty and try to maneuver. You know, like yeah. I, so. I hated the cell phone. I really nothing good ever happened. Different perspective. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think this will come off maybe like a little lame on the graphic. But for people our generation, I think yeah, like, yeah. First cell it. phone gets it. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, a, it's oh a big, big time. I can I can't even imagine. Yeah. yeah, it's a monster. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we were like we were the first family because we were a big family. There's eight of us so that we got rid of our landline landlines before anybody else did because we all had the family phones. Yeah, mm. I remember moment. that was a big thing because like they're like you don't have a house phone. It's like well, what do we need them for? Yeah, I remember we had a we had a house phone and a fax line when we when we first had. That oh yeah, house. we had a fax line. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fax yeah. Line. we never yeah. had a fax. No, you never had a you fax. could have sent the stir house a fax. Yeah, yeah, we you could fax us. You could fax the brand house. Oh yeah. Really? Right. Yeah, my dad would do like a good amount of work out of there, so it was really just for him. Yeah. So he would have to fax documents sometimes, and then I was wondering so fax. Yeah. Uh, Carl, you're up. Um. All right. I don't want to go down to V8 territory here again, but I do feel there's a first in in a lot of young people's lives. Uh, it's your first. It's like this part you're in second grade. What's the biggest first in second grade? You're in, you're in second grade. Second grade. And you're like eight years old. And there's this big first. It's the big. It's you're our get your bike. first holy communion. It's your first holy communion. No. Your first holy oh. communion party. First communion. Your first holy communion party when you get fucking four grand and you're walking around oh, okay. and like you know right. I'm not talking about you're selling it. it. I didn't get that. You you're guys selling didn't, me. You didn't have a first holy communion party. You're I, I had me. a first communion. I yeah. Don't. No. The first because like your whole second grade process it just like leads you to being like all right now you're getting you're gonna go to communion now you can do all this stuff and it's just like this you you go to church every Sunday you're just yeah. sitting there like what well, I don't do that I'm not a part of this at all and they're like hey come this may you're gonna do you still have really no concept of what's going on elio just had a tweet about it actually recently because i think his daughter went through it but afterwards you throw this crazy party and there's like it's like basically like a graduation like a party it's for some yeah it's basically mitzvah. like that for yeah um and the party afterwards and you get a ton of money and you're the center of attention it's you, really like four thousand I mean, I we yeah, probably it, have, it's relative. Like, as depends, depends on, on what your uncle. You like, you like, have an uncle yeah. Timmy. I, was, I have an uncle Timmy, so yeah, I, mine was four thousand. Really? Like, yeah. mine was not extravagant at all. It yeah. was just a party at the fucking house. You like open, the, yeah, you open the garage and you, yeah, chicken you tetrazzini, know, you get three the fucking, coolers a pop. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's all it was. Did you you didn't put a tent in the back? There might have been a gazebo, but we said first. I mean, I got a. I'm, and again, this is a little bit draft strategy. I got a broad list here. I got the. I wanted a good childhood thing. Like, what's your big your first? Now, and I remember, okay, you, like the first time I got a, mm, on Christmas, this and that, the excitement. No, this was a big, this was like, you were the center of attention for an entire weekend. And like mm -hmm. aunts, uncles, cousins, everybody came <clears> over, <throat> you got an envelope of cash. Um, and that's the pick. Yeah, mm. my parents bought me a dino zone. Okay. For my 
you had you had a it was a special moment yeah so I, i'll remember that for sure Stu, i communion um no i'm i'm a jew so i married yeah. irish catholic this, this <laughs> yeah but tell me about your bar mitzvah my, my my well let's go to my brother's bar mitzvah where we stole the nope. pot from the band <laughs> which was the which was the year later and i got my first hand job yeah, you just that tweeted out a amazing. picture of you and your mom or something, and you were like, right, well, that, that right was after my, this that picture, I was staring at Sandy's that was tits. My I was my brother's bar mitzvah, exactly. First hand job. It was amazing. So first Holy Communion party. It was. I went from getting the hand job, going to the bathroom, cleaning up, and then going to the v table. And it was just the greatest thing ever. I just ate so many sweets. I thought I was the cat's meow. It was good. <laughs> my bar mitzvah was great, though. Just, I, you know, um, you know what it was? I mean, I, we don't we don't we don't want to turn this into a a, a negative, but being a Jew uh, was very difficult, very difficult. I came from Brooklyn. Uh, I moved here in 1970, March of fourth grade, where in Brooklyn there was all Jews. I came to Long Island, and Jews were hated. Matter of fact, the first day we moved in, never forget it. I'm in fourth grade. My brother's in third grade. My father's at work. My mother drives to the uh, dairy barn. Did you have dairy barns? Do you know what that is? No. It's no. a, it's a freestanding, a freestanding like 7-Eleven, but it sold milk, it sold iced tea, it sold orange juice. Those were the main things at the dairy barn. And donuts and stuff like that. We go to the dairy barn to get milk and iced tea. We come back and the word kike, K-I-K-E, which is the worst person, worst thing you could call a Jew, is written on our driveway. My mother's like hysterical crying. I don't even know what the word means. She explains it to me. Me and my brother are now crying. We walk to the door and there's an umbrella hanging from like uh, the gutter. And my mother opens the door, the umbrella falls and it's all rocks and crab apples and they break the milk and the iced tea. So growing up as a Jew was a nightmare. And when I had my bar mitzvah, um, most of the people in the area gave me shit except for the very few let's say it was 90 percent non-jew and 10 percent jews and so um having that bar mitzvah when i was you know 13 and being a jew as a young child uh was rough it was mm. rough you know i mean you know i was gonna i was gonna use as one of these things the first knockout i ever had because in seventh grade after getting my ass kicked in fifth and sixth kid called me the kike and it was the and I just hit him straight in the jaw and I knocked him out as my first knockout. I was gonna say that as the best thing, you know, yeah. because yeah. but I but it's a little, you know, it's like a okay. you know, no, it's, it's not awesome. Really it's happy. awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> and then I it's awesome. I, from seventh and eighth grade, I had over 130 fights and I had like 50 knockouts. Right. Knockouts, like cold knockouts. Mm -hmm. Crush people. And then in ninth grade, I got my fucking ass kicked a lot because I haven't grown from the people I knocked out in mm -hmm. seventh and eighth grade. So what goes around comes around. Yeah. Yeah. And Relatable. you got whacked off at your brother's bar mitzvah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was, it, let me tell you something. It was just absolutely phenomenal because the girl that did it, I'm never going to say her name. She knew what to do because she maneuvered herself. She, she said, don't shoot on me. I go, I don't have a gun. What do you mean shoot on me? She goes, no, no, no. It's going to come out. I'm gonna be like, what? I was like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. All right. Outside the box, I'd say, but uh, yeah, I've, I've yeah. got, a, I've got, a, I've got a balance list. I've holy balance communion list. party. Yeah. Your first holy communion party, right? Yeah. Your first mm -hmm. holy communion party. Yeah. I guess. Your only holy communion party. Yeah, because it's. First I don't know last. why it's called your first holy communion, but yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the first time you get holy communion? Yeah. yeah. I think for Lutherans, it's like eighth grade, but I never did that shit. We had, well, <laughs> that would be, that's when you do that, or is that confirmation? It's confirmation. Okay, that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Yeah, don't so, worry about it. Yeah, I guess I just, maybe my parents were just like, nah, fuck you. We didn't have, I don't remember having well, a party are you, for that. Are you a Protestant? No, I'm Catholic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, I remember Holy doing. Communion, then confirmation, right? Yeah, yeah confirmation, mm -hmm. I think, was like maybe sophomore year for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, White Sox Dave. First walk off dinger. <laughs> <laughs> man i uh, it was i was okay so there's two of them that i've had in my life one was when i was 12 i didn't appreciate it i hit one against downers grove south when i was a junior uh a walk-off and it's you're circling those bases your mind's like it's it's a high it's a rush it's the best fucking feeling on earth 
I mean, I don't. I, they, you guys can't relate because what you percentage <laughs> of people do you think if it'll walk off home run? I don't care. This earth? I don't care. I can't Not relate. Really. I suck at baseball, so I. But I, I know hitting a, your first walk off. I, sh- I probably fucked it up because just hitting walk off dingers is awesome. The first one I hit, uh, we were playing actually in Wasco. We were playing Wasco, and that was a great baseball program. Um, and I hit a walk off dinger and then Braden land who I haven't seen since I was like 12 years old. He walked off the next game with the dinger. We had back to back walk off dingers. Um, it's like, it, it's you end the game because you were physically yeah, dom- dominating better than your opponent. And it's just the best feeling on earth. I wish I, I wish I would have had like more. Like boxing, I would have loved to knock someone out in boxing or something because that, like, the feeling of over physicaling probably sick. Your opponent is just—it's the best. Yeah, All right. Your hand hurts. Your hand That's hurts, fine. Al. Your hand hurts when you knock. Pain when is you, temporary. Knock, glory lives hand. forever, Stu. Yeah, like my 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 the the athlete. My son was a tough guy. He in bars and stuff. He he went to Binghamton and him and his friends. Uh, um, befriended like the number one person in that town, and so they own like ten bars, and they were all bouncers. And his hands are like all broken. All their friends, their hands are broken, and and it hurts forever. So it it, is, it you you think it would be good, but it, it really is it good. Your fucking hands hurt. Stu, like, weren't you gonna hard. fight in rough and rowdy a couple of years ago? Yeah, fucking, I would have made a quarter of a million, maybe half a million dollars. That was when fucking uh, that was the first time Barstool got bought out, and yeah. uh, I'm training. And uh, I tore my bicep in right. the ring. I was boxing, and my bicep went from here to no, here. No, no, no. Is that right? Let me tell you something. It was, it was horrific. So no. not only did I not get paid a dollar, not a penny. You know, Dave said, tough break. That was about what I got. In addition to it, I had to have surgery, obviously. And then how about this? The surgery went bad. So wow. I had to wear a brace for nine months, Ooh. seven hours a day, because my hand was locked like this. I had to have a brace that turned my hand like this. It was one of the lowest moments of my life. Jesus. Let me tell you something. And my wife just absolutely pissed on me. And it was on it, the the uh, Rough and Rowdy event was on my birthday, two days before the Super Bowl. It was Friday, January 31st, three years ago. And it was my birthday. And I was bringing all my friends there and it was going to be an epic event and, you know, yeah. horrific. So you'd never fight but, again uh, then, I assume? No, uh, listen, I trained. Uh, the worst feeling in the world is getting hurt. Yeah. I can't, I'm, you know, I was 57 at the time. Now I'm 61, so it's four years ago. Um, but I'd be afraid to get hurt. Yeah. Training so much. Like, I trained 90, 91, 92 to run New York City Marathon. And I would have ran in under three hours. I was running seven minute, 10 miles. I weighed 156 pounds. I was flying. And all three times, like six weeks, five weeks, four weeks, I pulled my groin. Two times I tore my groin and couldn't run. So the worst thing in the world is training for an event and then getting hurt Mm -hmm. because it's just horrific, you know? And then for the rough and ready, my wife pissed on me because she didn't want me to do it. She says, you're 57. And then, and then, because I said, honey, there's no problem. You wear headgear. And then for that event, Dave said, no headgear. So, that, so then she's like, what do you mean no headgear? You're going to hit the head. You're going to die. What are you talking? How are you doing this? I'm like, honey, it's going to be the greatest thing ever. We're going to make so much money. I'm getting 50% of the pay-per-view. You don't realize how great this is going to be. I'm going to have the greatest walkout. You know, I'm going to go wild. And P.S., you know, she's uh. like, I told you so. And nothing's worse in the world than your wife telling you, I told you so, and she's dead right. You know, maybe my son telling me I told you so, and he's dead right. Mm. The worst. The who, worst. who are you supposed to fight? Um, well, uh, the- Jeff Nadeau, when he weighed like 1,100 pounds, um, was going to – Dave wanted to put him against me because Dave didn't want me to get killed. Because mm-hmm. who, I mean, look, I'm five four three quarters at the time I was 57. You know, who's going to fight me? Like hobbits? You know, where, where are we getting somebody from? Middle Earth? So we, the first <laughs> one was Jeff Nadeau. But, you know, he's a fucking pussy. So he said, if I win, it wouldn't matter. And if I lose, it wouldn't matter. So he backed out. And I didn't have anybody. So mm-hmm. Dave was lining somebody up for me. Would we, you fight Jeff Nadeau right now? Well, did He can't fight. Did you, yeah. did you see what Jerry did? <laughs> come on now, please. Just curious. With, listen, with a blindfold, with both hands tied behind my back, 
I would headbutt that piece of shit to death. He's, he's a fucking, not a fighter. I, I, listen, Jerry wasn't in shape to fight him. Jerry didn't look like anything, be honest. Yeah. And Jerry beat the fuck out of him. That might have been the worst. I don't think he's threw a punch, Nadu. Not one punch. It he didn't throw a punch. He has no idea how to fight. That was the and worst he, fight in the history of combat sports. I mean, listen, and yeah, Jerry did was. not come in shape. If Jerry came in shape, <laughs> Jeff Nadu might have died. There would be no rough and rowdy. Dave Portnoy would have a fucking lawsuit that he couldn't get out of because Jerry would have killed him if Jerry came in, you mm -hmm. know, in shape. Jerry's probably 30 pounds overweight. I mean, Jerry's strong, deceivingly strong, but he wasn't in shape. Like, you saw that. Like, yeah, yeah Nate, mm -hmm. you can't fight. Yeah. No, no. I killed him. Yeah, I would have killed him. I would have killed Literally, like, I'm talking like I would have to pay for the funeral kill. <laughs> All right, walk off dingers off the board, uh, Mr. Relevant Chief. Who is our last pick of the draft? I'll go. I'll go a, a sports thing as well. But the first time you play in front of like a real crowd, mm. so like that, like you're. That's a great one. That is. That's where I should have gone. Where Fuck. They, where they actually care. Like I, I didn't have a big moment like you're talking about, like a walk off or an OT goal or anything like that. Um, when people actually cared, but like the pregame warm up. And then we and at Berkshire we had this old old barn rink and the whole, they would and we had stands but like the whole town the whole area would come so we'd get we'd pack like I don't know two thousand people not like a crazy number but it was packed and then all of our students would sit underneath where this old air vent was and when we scored they would like bang on this air vent so like the place would just like explode it would be so loud and that was like it was like the it was the best it was like the best feeling when you're like doing when you're doing something. Where people are engaged and actually like care, oh, that was that's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I feel like most people had some kind of version of that yeah. in high school. Yeah, for yeah, sure. we had that. So for sophomore football, we we um, we would play before the varsity team. Yeah, and and that was back when Wheaton South was like you know at its peak for football, mm -hmm. and the entire city was there. You'd, for the big games, we would get like. A lot of like ten thousand people yeah. out to those yeah, games. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and uh, for baseball, for me, it was we were playing in the playoffs against Bennett my junior year, and I was I was a catcher and I was behind home plate, and I remember looking out the fucking amount of people behind it was like going into the parking lot. And if you've ever played at Bennett Academy, you know the streets like right next to the field. It was just overflowing. Yeah. I remember looking around, and I'm like, holy fuck, there's a yeah. lot of people here. Yeah, like, and it gives you the chills a little. Bit. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. That that big game feeling, and even like when you're like all day at school, when mm -hmm. you're like walking around, because if it was football, you would wear your wear jersey. Jerseys, yeah. Hockey, we had like our our warm ups. It was that was like a great great feeling. It's a good pick. Definitely. Playing we lost that game against crowd. Bennett. Then we beat him next year. No big deal. Sorry, Dave. They were ranked first in state too, and fucking whooped their ass like nine years ago, <laughs> seventeen years ago. Um, all right, I'm gonna run through the whole list here. Then we'll do some honorable mentions. We'll get out of here. Uh, Stu, ass eaten, eating acid, <laughs> seeing Empire Strikes Back back to back. Son and was a newspaper. Father says he's proud of you. Eddie, uh, college party, real paycheck, seeing boobs in media, uh, drinking illegally, getting a cell phone. Carl, getting high on weed, having sex, concert, beer with dad, holy communion party. White Sox, Dave, seeing your team win a championship, legal drink of alcohol, hitting your first dinger. Signer. Uh, signer, sorry, sorry. Hitting your first signer, uh, buying a house, walk-off dinger. Chief, driving, walking into Major League Stadium, getting a dog, touching a boo, playing in front of real crowd. Stu, any honorable mentions you had that you didn't get to? Yeah, I got, I got, I got two. I got two. The first time, uh, fifth grade, because uh, I did a lot of thinking about this because I didn't want to embarrass myself, so I was ready to roll. Uh, and the first list I threw out because it probably would have gotten us canceled, so you're not getting any of those. Um, the first time, fifth grade, uh, I had a big test. It was on a Thursday, and I was going to miserably fail it. I just, I just couldn't, it, it, I was going to fail it. I tried to study, I studied, but I, I was just, this wasn't happening. So Monday I'm studying with my mother and father, Tuesday, mother and father, Wednesday, mother and father, Thursday comes. And I say to my mother, I said, I don't feel good. And she just smiled at me and said, you don't want to take this test, do you? I said, no, she goes, okay. She put my brother on the bus. She came back to the house. 
and we played gin rummy the whole day. And it, so it'd be the first time that my mother let me miss a test and she was good with it. My father would have never. She, when we came home, she lied to my father and said I went to school and took the test. And my brother ratted me out saying, he wasn't on the bus, he didn't take the test, and then I had to come clean. But during that whole day, my mother made um, an egg with the hole in the middle for me, which was my favorite breakfast, which would be a piece of white bread, and you cut the middle out, and you drop an egg in it. Oh, yeah. And you take that other piece and put it in the pan, and you'd fry it. And she made me like four eggs with the hole in the middle. She And then uh, that was breakfast. And then lunch was tuna fish, which she made the most amazing tuna fish in the world with onions and green apples and Ruffles potato chips. And then uh, dinner, when my father came home, because we always waited for my father to get off the uh, train from Manhattan and come home. And he would sit at the table, smoke four Vantage cigarettes before dinner started. And then she made chicken cutlets. So that was like... Uh, one of one of the highlights of my entire life, and I how we would I would say honorable mention would be Tom. My mother let me stay home mm. and miss a test mm. from school. That's a good memory. Uh, that would yeah. be that would be mm. that one. And then the next one would be uh, the first time that I met Donald Trump and Marla Maples. So I'm gambling at the Trump Taj Mahal. Uh, I lose a quick hundred thousand, quick, and then I get another marker, and I lose like fifty of them. And Donald and Marla came over to me. And Donald, uh, the Taj Mahal at the time was an insane hotel. It was the most beautiful hotel in Atlantic City. But the key is it had it had this special high roller pit where you had a restaurant called Scheherazade in the corner. And Donald came over to me, said hello to me, and said, literally, stew you have to slow down. And I said, no, 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 I'm good. And he literally, he, listen, he's a strong fucking guy. You don't think so. He grabbed me and said, Stu, how many people you got here? I said, eight. He goes, on me, go into the Scheherazade room, eat and slow down. And uh, it was the greatest restaurant in the world. Like, you can't believe how good that restaurant was. The bread was great. Yeah, and then, you see, Donald was super smart where he, he, the way he made all his money is everything was free. We must have drank like eight bottles of Cristal champagne on him. Five course meal on him. Soup to nuts on him. And uh, and then I came back and lost the other two. So, but P.S., you know, a quick $200,000 loss. Um, but I would, so I would say the first time I ever met Donald Trump. That would be hmm. that would be like one of the greatest things I love ever. it. Interesting pick. You know, just pick. amazing. And Marla Maples was the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen in my life in person times 10. She was so gorgeous, I tried to pick her up. I literally tried to maneuver because that I was like, my mouth was open. That's how gorgeous she was. Hmm. Um, but I would, so I would say the first, uh, and obviously she's, you know, I was flirting with her, but she, you know, she's like, come on, Stu, you know, back off, you know. But she was, she liked me because I made her laugh. And Donald liked me uh, because I made him laugh. Um, because we in it, when we were in Brooklyn, we used to live in Donald Trump's father's buildings. They were called Beach Haven, uh, twenty six sixty two West Second Street. It was ten six story apartment buildings right off Ocean Parkway, off the Bell Parkway, and Fred Trump, his father, owned them. So I told him the story about that. So I, you know, I got in with them. I'm a good schmoozer, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I would say the first time I met Donald Trump, mm -hmm. which was amazing because he owned at the time the Taj Mahal, mm -hmm. Trump Plaza, Trump Castle. You know, he had he had buildings you know he was like you know my he was like he was probably at the time my third idol it was it was uh don it was uh j paul getty uh donald trump and john madden those are my three idols. john madden interesting yeah. slow down um anybody else yeah I, I was gonna do something with like there's some point when you realize like drunk food but I, I, it's not like the first time you get drunk for me it was like I, we were in the mode of maybe we started drinking like that that March or, or or April like pretty seriously my sophomore year of high school where it became social where it was like what are we doing who's got booze where are we going yeah. and then maybe later in that summer it was like we should get fucked up and then we should go tackle like three crave cases 
And so there, I couldn't like pinpoint where that is, yeah, but there is that, that like, f- there is that moment I think in like a, a young person's life when they're like, oh, dude, we should get hammered and then crush all those pizzas or whatever. So mm-hmm. I think that's like a first realization. Yeah. Is the crazy case is White Castles? Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, the best. Yeah. <laughs> the best. You... White Castles, the best. Oh yeah, especially another one we up. can't do is like. Um, we, you know, like I would never write this on the blog. You, if I tweeted this, I'd probably get fired. But like the first time you get that relationship with the bookie, you know, Stu had talked about it early, but like the first time when like, I don't know, you're like 19 years old and it's like, call this number. This guy takes a bet. And like the first time you get, I don't know, it's like the first time you get paid out or the first yeah, time you have to pay time. in or just like that weird, oh, yeah. weird, weird, fucked up relationship. Yep. Remember I told the story about the guy at prep school had the big balls? Yeah. He also ran the book oh, for yeah. the school. Yeah. Um, I got some here. I remember the first time, like, it was like, remember when girls would make out? Oh, like watching them yeah, in college? It was yeah. Like, dude, yeah. Girls, the first time you see Fuck girls yeah. make out was like sick. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was like, That's, that almost dude, sounded really, like. These two girls uh, are making out at Canty. It yeah. was like, oh, dude, really? Yeah. yeah. That almost sounded like office space. What? Like, what would you do with a million dollars? Yeah, two, two chicks, chicks the same <laughs> time. Never see two man. chicks make out? Yeah. Dude, but remember that, though? Like, it was like, oh, girls yeah. would just make out, and it's like, oh, dude. Well, that was like, you know, like, first you could say that your that. first college party, too. Like, I yeah. feel like like that was like, that was a day. Yeah. Yeah. I had first high school party. Um, obviously, off college party. Um, first time at the mall, no surprise there for me, but there was mm-hmm. something about, like, well, you mean I could go anywhere? Like you could spend so much time in the food, wherever you wanted to, you were fine. Anywhere in that mall. Yeah, first yeah. time at a bar, first time at the casino, that was huge, because you had to be 21. I was yeah. like, first yeah. time in Vegas would be, should I should have yeah. the fifth round. First time in Vegas. First time in Vegas, a great pick. And then I, last one I had was hand job. And like, I know it wasn't good, but it was like, man, someone touched Who this. said it wasn't good? Yeah, Who said it, it wasn't probably good? probably wasn't. I, no, uh, hand jobs by and large are disrespected. You think so? I yes. Think so. A good old Extremely fashioned crank? Very underrated. Really? Hmm. I think so. Though. Do you yeah, like Robin Tug, Stu? Are you a Robin Tug guy? Um, who isn't? <laughs> <laughs> well said. I think. Um, I've never been to one. But you know what I mean? It's like it's like uh, there was something about like, oh man, the first time. Like you know what I mean? Someone yeah. other than me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah no. Like when yeah. when, yeah. I mean, when yeah. she re- when she enthusiastically reaches underneath the waistband yeah. of the elastic of your boxers and they move yeah. and she reaches and she grabs oh. it and you're like whoa and Holy you're like this shit. is what you want to do yeah <laughs> whoa really <laughs> it's crazy um, that's all I got uh, Stu Finer you're the best thank you for coming I love on. you guys thank you so, I, listen I feel like we're blood right now we're like <laughs> friends we gotta get a we gotta get a combo together on me or something let's go we gotta hang out right, and next year it's like your your first Stu Finer house experience yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Well, I could listen June third, June fourth. Everybody, come to the Bellagio. That's mm-hmm. where we're, uh, Borgata. Excuse me. Come to the Borgata. That's where we're going to be. Yeah, yeah. would love to. Would love to go. My good friend Carmen was just out at your last party. He wanted me to say hi in the draft. So, we'll, oh, we'll, Carmen we'll, Rossi. Yeah. I was telling these guys. Yeah. Listen. First of all, when I fucking met him, I gave him a big hug. He looks like he's 18 years old. Uh-huh. I mean, he's 37. He, what a good looking guy, but he looks so young. I go, you look like one of my fucking kids. Mm-hmm. I loved him. Yeah, he's good a, guy. Very respectful. Super nice guy. Super duper nice guy. Yeah. All right, Stu. Thanks a lot again. Um, All right, this love was you fun. guys. Very grateful. Thank. You. I, I don't take it for granted. I appreciate you, you know, including me. Same. Right. Likewise, Stu. Likewise. Andy, thanks for being so inclusive. And yep. guys, so nice meeting you and hugging it out. Let's go. It awesome. Was, it, it was great, and I think it was our longest one ever. Oh yeah. 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 I think so. So. I think so. Um, all right then, everybody. Thank you for listening. That's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you then.